latest on the trade front here with the Knicks is that New York did indeed touch base with Detroit about a potential Andre Drummond trade. Now, things can and do change quickly here in trade season because we're so close to the deadline, but I was told that the Knicks' recent talks with Detroit were indeed more serious than just an exploratory nature, so this is something to keep an eye on, and there's several elements here when you talk about the Knicks and Drummond to unpack. For one, Drummond is a potential free agent. He has a player option for next season, and ESPN has reported that Detroit expects him to opt out of that contract. What's going on? This is Jalen Smith Tom Show, giving you that Knicks talk just in the nick of time. And we got some guests today before I, but before I get to them, I'm going to introduce the guy, the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with the stats and the facts. Ryan G in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also... Day ones, yep. Yes, sir. Day ones are back. <laughs> I think it might have been our first guest, if I remember correctly. Probably the first guest. I'm probably, I think yeah, so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, probably the first guest. Uh, started Instagram page at the same time. They blew up and got famous, but they didn't leave us behind though. They still know us and stuff. <laughs> which is cool. Never that. Never that. They, they mad real guy. This is my guy, NY Freaks, man. The NY Freaks. Yeah. So shout out to you guys, man. What up? What up? Yeah. It's uh, Eric and Nick on the mic. We got Jack and Joseph also there in the back. They're not going to be yep. speaking, though, because it's not enough room. Yeah. <laughs> Full house. And Eric too many and... opinions. Yeah. yeah. Too many yeah, opinions. Yeah, right. And let me tell you, these guys have strong opinions. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, if you guys watched the KOT show, the only day Ryan was gone, it was just me, Kathy, <laughs> Eric, and I got double teamed by Eric and Kathy about R.J. Barrett. So I know I'm going to have an interesting conversation about R.J. Barrett today. It's going to be fruitful and, and fun. <laughs> I'm with it. But yeah, yeah, great. It was a good show, regardless, regardless. Anyway, so um, yeah, I thought it was going to be a slow week. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, slow week. Uh, I know it's trade season. Usually, trade news flies around, but it seemed like it was going to be a little slow, and then. A lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Pandemonium breaks. Everything goes haywire. Shams comes out and reports that uh, the Detroit Pistons and the Knicks are kind of in trade talks. He kind of says that the Knicks initiated the trade talks and they want to trade Andre Drummond for possible future picks or young players. And I'm sitting there like, wait, huh? Wait, Andre, <laughs> Andre that doesn't... Doesn't that, make sense. Does it, does it, does it make sense? No, why would make sense. we? Why? So, what are, what are your initial thoughts when you hear something news like this? I mean, when you hear about Andre Drummond, you know what he's gonna bring to the table. The automatic twenty and ten kind of guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? At this season, twenty and twenty, which is like ridiculous. Yeah. But who who really thinks he's gonna keep that up? Yeah, but then again, you didn't think Harden was going to keep up this 40-point spree either, and he is, so. Yeah. But when you think of him, you think he's somebody you would definitely want on your team. I think he would solidify our center position. Mm -hmm. But to mm -hmm. give picks or to give away our future makes no sense. But I, I, I would try to trade for him if we could work around something. Don't mm -hmm. trade for him. But I wouldn't give up. <laughs> <laughs> now, he, he, he averages 17.6 points a game, 16 rebounds. Ooh. 1.9 steals, 1.8 block. He's having you know, a, a, yeah. a, his best year. He's playing for a career. contract. Of course, it, He's playing man, for a contract. It is. It's <laughs> yeah. that contract yep. season. Now, he has another season, a year next season. Mm -hmm. But in his mind, it's a contract year because as He's you heard Ian e. Begley say, mm -hmm. boom, yeah. he can out that. Now, you say you don't, you, you're not trying to. We have Mitch. Money, money, make exactly. it Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> we have Mitchell Robinson. He's only 21. 22. Mm -hmm. But I, I also feel like Mitchell Robinson is so versatile that with his game, you could almost move him to power forward and then have Drummond at center. Nah. nah. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely I, not. Think, I, think, I, think, I think they occupy the same spaces on the court, so I don't think it would have worked, it would work it would, that yeah, Exactly. We yeah. would have to trade Mitch, but I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That either. should not happen. And nah. we have Kenny Wooten. We I mean, didn't get to Kenny Wooten yet. <laughs> he ain't a cut in the G League, yeah. catching balls out the air and getting blocked shots. And nah, we ain't but, talking about <laughs> Kenny yet. But if you was to move him to power forward and he works on his mid-range game, which he's proven he's working on it a lot, and you see a bunch of practice and stuff, that would also help him stay out of foul trouble, which is his main thing. Because he's dealing with bigger centers and, you know what I mean, the physicality of the game is what's getting him into foul trouble. When you move him into power forward with his speed and versatility, you knock out the foul trouble. Now he can finally play the minutes he needs to play. But, it, and, but in order to do that, you have to get rid of Julius Randle 
or Morris. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I would do it around. Here's, here's, yo, Mitch. My, 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 I love you, Mitch. I love you, mm-hmm. <laughs> my guy. Before I even criticize you, this is none but love. This is one of my favorite Knicks players. Mm-hmm. RJ, Mitch, solidified, staying. I want them here. Boom. Mm-hmm. That being said, a man is scared to shoot a jumper. Yeah. He's scared. He's scared. You think he's he, scared or you think the coach is saying don't shoot? No. Uh, first of all, Fizdale was making Enos Cantor shoot jumpers, all right? He yeah, was making him true. shoot threes. And he took a few and Enos Cantor was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But he took them. Mm-hmm. Mitchell Robinson is practicing them. I, he practices three-point shooting for 20 minutes a game before the game. And I see he makes mm-hmm. them. And he <laughs> makes them easily. Yeah. And even if you look at his free throw shooting, it suggests mm-hmm. that he could be a good... He could. Shooter in general, but he's just mm-hmm. not pulling that trigger. But I feel like the uh, sets they run him in is like like similar sets to how they were doing DeAndre Jordan and stuff, where he's more of the pick and roll, slashing. They are using moves. him like a lot like DeAndre. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If he moves to power really, forward, yeah. then he then he gets in the positions that Randall's been getting, and he could shoot the mid-range. That, here's, the, here's the thing, though, because like, during the game, though, more so when Fizz was around. So for the first 22 games or so, right? Um... There was points of the game, especially when you're playing teams like Brooklyn. They would just leave Mitch open by yep. the foul line. And they would just say, 5-1-4, mm-hmm. shoot it. I dare you. And he would just be, have the ball around like, uh, And look around. Uh, yeah. Somebody come get it. That's the time I'm like, yo, pull up. Pull yeah. up, Mitch. Uh, that is your <laughs> shot. Pull up. I think that comes with age, though. And just not. Confidence. Yeah, confidence. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Confidence. But I think you could grow into it, especially if you put him in the position to say, listen, this is what we need from you. Work on it. I think he's good enough. He's showed he's good enough that he could mm-hmm. constantly grow and constantly bring that potential up, especially if you look at what he was doing in high school. Oh, I, oh yeah. Yeah. And he's, that he's, one year off and coming back in the pros, he's a whole other player. Mm-hmm. So he shows he's coaching when he shows he can improve. We have 11 yeah. wins. Just shoot the ball, Mitch. Exactly. <laughs> shoot the ball. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's okay. going to happen. But, yeah. spot is a little but I just feel like as if, because right now he's leading the league in field goal percentage and he's highly effective as a pick and roll big man. So I feel like as if they're limiting his role at the moment and be like, you know what, since that's what you're highly effective as. That's what you. That's what you do. I think maybe later on now, when he continues to develop, then I think they might be like, all right, you, you know what? Now let's add to your game. Now shoot some jumpers at this and that. I will say Miller, because my example was given the physical example. I will say Miller. Miller is somebody who seems to be like, all right, you're good at this. I'm putting you here. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. good at this. I'm putting you here, and uh, that's why our uh, offense offense is going up. We're scoring. Yeah, we're 104 have. points more regularly right now. When we we struggled, but this is not a Fizdale Bass and Chessing. We've done that like 20 episodes again. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I think you you might be right. But I I think he has to be willing to take him, and I'm not sure if he is there yet. I'm not saying he can't. Uh huh. I'm not saying he never will. But at this point in time, to have him next next to Andre Drummond it's when they good. occupy the same space yeah, on the yeah. offensive well, end. The, the, way, the way I'm saying, though, if the Knicks are looking at it, then they see the potential of that. Because there's no way they're looking at Drummond to think, oh, Mitchell's not going to start now. Mitchell's coming off the bench. They have to think of it as he he's versatile enough to move his position and to solidify the center spot to keep him out of foul trouble. That's how you have to look my at it. If they're is, looking at it any other way, then My thing is, is it really sense. worth trading for Andre Drummond, though? Depends on what you give up. Exactly. Like, yeah. what if we give up picks or something? Like, I just like nah. this focus on the future thing that we're doing right now. Yeah. We have all a lot of young players. Yeah. We got draft mm-hmm. picks, and we got the two Mav- Mavs picks. Yeah. Focus on that. No, I exactly. agree. I don't. I don't think we need to trade for German. I don't. But I'm saying, if if it's a possibility to look at playing devil's advocate, it mm-hmm. could work. You, now, you, okay. you could go yeah, for it, especially well, if you're gonna give up Randall and Frank only mm-hmm. or something. You go for it now. If you're giving up picks, you're giving up Knox and mm-hmm. something. Then no. No, you my, don't. My do the whole future. thing, the only, the only thing, the only thing I fear about going after Drummond is that I just don't want it to be a situation where it's like, okay, we trade for Drummond, and then all of a sudden this dude is here for half a season. And he's like, you know what, I opt out, then I sign with another team. Boom. That's 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 my only thing yeah. where I'm like, you know what, yeah. I wouldn't go for. No, it. you you have to trade with him having an acknowledged agreement that when you come here, you're signing an extension. Yeah. yeah I mean, you have to have that agreement the same way that um we did with Melo. We did with Melo. Man, and and here's the problem with I see with that. I just don't. Okay. Right now, Drummond is making what twenty seven, twenty seven mm-hmm. million a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's gonna. He wants to opt out to get a max contract. No. <laughs> <laughs> this, like, this whole situation is such. It has Knicks written all over it, but don't do it. This like, sounds like Isaiah Thomas Knicks in my yeah, like. This doesn't yeah. sound. This doesn't feel good in my soul. Drummond's gonna get the money and become Eddie Curry. We don't. We don't. I don't need, want that to happen. No. <laughs> and in, t- in today's NBA, not to say there isn't a a. Um, 
there isn't room for that traditional big man who can like post up a little and oh, block yeah. shots. There's just room for that. Mm-hmm. But right now, when the NBA, when you need shooting and playmaking, and the way our mm-hmm. team's set up, it just it just doesn't work. In my opinion, it just doesn't work with him. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, the rumors are the rumors are okay. So the rumors are that the Knicks actually probably um most likely turned down that offer for for Frank and Randall. Um, mm. But to me, like, if they're still engaged in talks, Randall would have to be involved. I want just, Randall to be yeah. involved. He, just it, because, just because of the money, just just, just exactly. purely because of the money, he makes mm-hmm. the most money on the team. He yeah. makes eighteen million. Uh, <clears throat> um, Drummond makes twenty seven million at the at the moment. Yeah. So Randall has to be involved if they're still talking. So we know that's for the money to match, of course. Yeah. And then, and to be for example, like let's say Drummond does leave, now we have a spot open for more money. Because we got rid of Randall. Right. Yeah, so. But here's... Okay, and here, exactly. So yeah. here's how they could be looking at it, which is still funny to me. I still don't <laughs> like it, even mm. though this is how they still... Okay, so... But if they're looking at it like that, then that means they're playing the cap game to get who? Giannis? I don't, exactly. For, I don't. Is, I, I don't want to play the cab game. Right? Which is, <laughs> which, that's the pipe. That's called a pipe. Yeah, which pipe is, is, yeah. Done that before. Which is, take, that. which is, I'm taking my talents to South Beach all over. Exactly. Again. Or maybe they're hoping that Anthony Davis gets tired of LeBron James, and we, I don't know. This is pipe, pipe dream, pipe dream stuff. That we yeah. not even get. We, we did this. We did this last year. We got hurt. Yeah. I'm, I'm still PSD in. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not even going. I'm not even looking. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> but. To take it back to the game today, right? Um, Julius Randle comes back. Um, he plays with the Heat. Knicks beat the Heat today. Oh, hold on, hold on. Knicks beat the Heat. Knicks beat the Heat today. <laughs> yeah. First of all, Word. <laughs> come on, man. Come, come on. The Knicks beat the Heat. Ne- the Heat are the, the the third best team in the NBA. Mm, yep. They kill us for a team. The Knicks they don't like guarding the three point line, but for some mm. reason we figured something out today. <laughs> they didn't hit anything in the first half. The second half they started hitting, but we pulled out the win. Great, yeah. right? Great defense. I mean, hit clutch free throws when it mattered. Right. Uh, and for once. For once. <laughs> for once. RJ, 80% for three. Thank you. Thank you, RJ. About seven of our losses this year have been from bad free throws. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Can, can be just focused on the three point. But what I really want to focus on with that game is that game kind of illustrates what the team looks like on the offensive end when yep. Randall and Marcus Morris are separated from yep. each other. Mm-hmm. Both of those guys are really good. For sure. But sometimes fit. It they goes don't... It goes back to your point you were trying to make with Andre Jumman and... Mitch, they both occupy the same space and the boom. But the thing about it is with the difference between Mitch and that situation would be that Mitch is a growing player who still has so much potential to move and be versed when Morris and Randall are kinda they are who they, they are. Already solidified already. Who they you are, know what I mean? Yeah. Randall's right. in his what, fifth, sixth year, Morris is every thirty something. They're playing their game, they're playing. They might increase their percentages and get a little better if they work hard, but their game is their game. Yeah. They're not all of a sudden gonna develop a secret hook shot or something right. that changes their, you know what I mean? Like, they're not all of a sudden going to be step-back three-point shooters right. or something. Mm-hmm. They're going to play their game. My counter to that is Mitch needs minutes. If, if my right. guy plays 30 minutes, Andre Drummond plays 30 minutes a game. Yeah. yeah. If Mitch, if Andre Drummond is here playing 30 minutes a game, we're not going to start off from the drip playing Mitch at power forward. No, nah, yeah, that can't happen. That, like, that's that just a disaster. Happen. That would just, that just wouldn't be smart. I mean, the, the, the benefit to have an Andre Drummond here, so we could separate Randall if Randall's involved. Mm-hmm. We might able to move DSJ because he's because might as well just move him. It's, we're it's, not gonna do yeah, nothing. Yeah, with not, him. We're like, and the, and that that just, play is late. not wouldn't be for now anyway. Andre Drummond is only twenty six years old. We still be young. This is to start building something for a future move. If you think we're training for Andre Drummond to then make the playoffs right after, that's delusional. There, here's There's the thing. No chance. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He doesn't change it, our team that much. That it doesn't out. because they're only 11, but I think we're forgetting one thing. And Rope last in. week, last week I played the intro that to- and Wolves was talking about GMs making moves. Listen, GMs who are secure in their jobs, they will f- make moves that pretty much, you know, they, they'll involve more long-term thinking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They just had a press conference a few months ago, 
And it was coming out in the news that there's a possibility they can lose their jobs. So to keep their jobs, their jobs being kept might be predicated on wins. And if they're likely. if they're win if they don't win, they might lose their job. So that can mm-hmm. affect what trades are made when that long term aspect that mm-hmm. Knicks fans have for this team yeah. could be out the window because Perry and Mills want to keep their job. Yeah, so, but I mean, they trade for Drum. They still not keeping their job because Drum will, Drum's gonna add like what three three more wins or something like that. Just, yeah, it's not. So it's I mean, not it's, worth it. I know it's saying. not. I, I know this. <laughs> to trade, you know this. <laughs> to trade for Drum and to think they're gonna keep their job is to solidify they have a plan. That's what all that would be about. That's not to solidify the win now. It will keep their job for another two years, and then if yeah, Drummond bounces exactly. or something, and then but that's that's to prolong. Yeah, like you said, their job because it'd be like we got a plan. Look, like, we got Drummond at center. We got Mitch Power forward. We got RJ. You know what I mean? Maybe we could build Knox, and this draft coming up. Maybe we get a point guard. Right. Like, you start saying we could build things. I have a plan. Just trust me. I, do it. <laughs> I got a question for you. Come guys. on, Dolan. I got what? I got a question. Yeah, if we did Randall and Frank for Drummond and Rose, would you do it? And Rose, bring Rose back. I'm not trading Frank yeah. right now, yo. No, nah. I'm not trading Frank. I love Rose because it's funny. The crazy part is, if you look on on off stats for Detroit Pistons, yeah. mm-hmm. you would think, oh, Drummond is the you know the best. Rose is the one. Rose who's is the, the best player, the most <laughs> effective on that team. Yeah. You take yeah. Rose off that team, Dang. that team mm-hmm. is going kaput. Yeah, because them missing Blake really hurts. It oh, does. Yeah, yeah, it does. Hundred yeah. percent. It does. Yeah. It does. But ah, mm-hmm. yeah, like. If if a trade were to go down, maybe I would try to like pull Canard. That would be dope. That would be pretty you know, dope. Mm-hmm. maybe Randall, DSJ for Drummond and Canard, and I just I, we need to get away from yeah. this whole talk. Don't even go for Drummond. Like I don't. I don't want, want like, Drummond yeah, either. I don't, I don't want him. Either. I don't want him either. <laughs> it makes no sense. To me. But it's like yeah. at least if he leaves, we have a guy who can shoot. 39% from the three, yeah. who's actually a playmaker this yeah. season. He mm-hmm. actually yeah, put this game to 15 points. I don't, want, yeah. I don't want Drummond either, but if we are going to do it, I just hope we go about it smart. Like I said, and we, we don't give up picks, and we don't give up Definitely future yes. Knox, RJ, no, If Mitch. we give up picks, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I mean, that's, I, that's one thing I don't nah. think we're going to do, but I can see us giving up... Uh, I can see us giving up... DSJ because of the way they viewed him. I don't. He, he, I don't. I don't buy that he wants to be here. He just looks uninterested when he's playing. Yeah, no. yeah. Like, he looks I, like Mark, Marcel Fultz in his first year. Yeah, he just looks like, like a zombie playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Trier. I feel like he's gonna leave. I hate that we don't play him. Yeah, I love mm-hmm. Trier. I think he's a, he's a bucket. Like just play him. He he is a bucket, <laughs> and it's like this is one of those it's one of those things where we kind of overplayed our hand. We signed yeah. so many veterans that like. Mm-hmm. Now He's there's no his room, time. and it, and, it's, and it kind of hurt trade value. You don't really see where people players can. Tr- yeah, can him and Dotson kind of got affected by that too. Dot exactly. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm free dot. I'm a dot fan. Yeah, exactly. Me too. But um, Dotson would have to also be on that list mm-hmm. as well because you just mm-hmm. even though that's my that's my guy. Yeah. And if I'm on GGM and I'm like, I know we don't have any bird rights or nothing. Mm-hmm. He can yeah. just walk too. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and it's unfortunate for Dotson too because it's like. Because he basically got replaced for Bullock, and then you look how then you look how Bullock is playing. It's like it's hard to really defend it and be like, you know, what Dodgers should be getting more playing time when Bullock is there, you know, act, playing really good. Yeah, Bullock is doing his thing. Yeah, he saved he saved our ass today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it helped. And he's a forty percent career three point shooter in general. So you, you figure the Knicks want to keep him, and he's also for sure. only costing to what two million? Yeah. For yep. the next two years, yeah. I'm keeping him. He can stay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm keeping him. What makes things hard is when you have a subpar team, but you have players playing above their means. It's hard to figure out who keeps, who goes, who. You know what I mean? That's that's where they're stuck in right now. We have too many par level players, not enough superstars. You know what? And that can bring us into the Marcus Morris thing. Or before I even get to that, do you guys? If do, would you guys want any other players from the Pistons? No. If that trade, no, 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 you don't want Galloway coming back. Nah, no. free, free, free Gallo, no, <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah. nah, we good. You don't want, you don't want, you don't want to reunite uh, hit, uh, Morris with his brother. Nah, he, we we Mark. No, no, no. <laughs> nah, we good. Yeah. <laughs> we 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 got the better Morris. So okay. Yeah. 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 All right, no more forwards. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, that was the next thing I was saying. That's enough forwards. No, no more forwards. Okay, cool. All right, all right. Just, just asking. All right, cool. <laughs> That's fine, all right. 
Bruh. Not for me for asking. <laughs> <laughs> so, this brings us to the Marcus Morris news. I really want, actually wanted Kathy here today, just so, just so I can see her, the reaction on her face. <laughs> Because we've been debating, like, yo, we have to move Marcus Morris because he's overperforming, even though, even though he's, I love, this, this is, Marcus Morris is my yo. favorite signing. It's so hard to be like, yeah, trade him. It's not enthusiastically. It. Yeah. Let no. me tell you. Yeah. Uh, it's not an enthusiastic. Yeah, get him out of here. Yeah. Like, trade him? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I would love for Morris to stay, but it would be dope if we could do a kind of thing like the Yankees did with Chapman. You like, bring yeah, him we'll, back. We'll trade you, yeah. get some good pieces, but then we'll sign you back next year since you want to be here so bad. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That would be dope. That would be super dope because the Knicks have never actually done anything like that. Nah, I would, I would love mm-hmm. to keep Morris, man. I want players in the Knicks that want to be here. On the flip mm-hmm. side, I feel like he's the type of dude to hold a grudge. <laughs> he would get tight. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you traded me? Not oh, yeah. Not unless, you, not unless you sit him down and work it out. Like, listen... We're going to trade you because we need the pieces, but we want to bring you right back because we think you could be a pivotal part in the championship, but not with what we got around you now. So right. just go mm-hmm. to, we're going to trade you somewhere local, go to Charlotte or go to Philly or somewhere with not too far for a couple months, and then we're going to get you right I back. I mean, isn't he from mm-hmm. Philly? He, he is, is from Philly. Philly. I would not trade him to yeah, Philly yeah. for that reason. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would like trade that. him everywhere else but Philly. Well, local, like I said, local trade him Charlotte or something. Yeah, there you go. Something, it's, something crappy. That's not too far. <laughs> I love but it's not. Oh, no, you know what you give him? Give him to the Clippers or something. You gotta give him to the Clippers. Go ahead, try to win the chip. They can't sign you back. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Come back to the Knicks. I'm like, listen, like, give it a play because he, yeah. he likes to play. He wants the ball. Yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. listen, Knox needs burn. You saw what he did today. Yes. Knox needs burn. He Knox needs to get needs comfortable. To mm-hmm. We want you to come back to a stronger team. And for that to happen, we need this pick, my guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, send you off. What would be dope if we could flip Morris for Kuz? I, I, we had this, we had this talk last week. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Ryan? Morris for Kuz. I mean, looking at the Knicks roster... Kuz would fit in because Knicks have a young roster. Kuz is also young, so he could grow with the young guys on the team. <sighs> He's a good offensive player, obviously. You know, he brings a lot to the offense. He automatically becomes, like, the leading scorer if we... Well, but he's going to take... He's going to def- definitely give the points at Morris, you know, the yeah, same of amount of points, basically. I'm I'm fifty fifty on Kuz. Like I don't know with Kuz yet. Like I don't know if I'm yes or no on that yet. Okay, okay. that's fair. That's fair. I just feel like if Kuz is gonna give you the same thing that Morris is giving, and he's younger, he can only just get better and put him around other young players like how he was before LeBron came. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, old is, how old is Kuz? I think like 22, 20, 23. Yeah, twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, like yeah. around there. Yeah. Right, right. He's definitely not older than twenty four for sure. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely on the lower parts of twenty. Mm-hmm. The defense is kind of what... Yeah, that's the only thing that... And he's that's another power. He's yeah. another forward. So I'm yeah, just like, damn, yeah. another one? <laughs> damn. <laughs> but, hey, but he could play small forward. He can play small he's forward. He's versatile mm-hmm. and he shoots well enough. You could move him to small forward. Yeah. But that's a tough one, but... In, that gets in Knox's development, though. Yeah. Yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, gets... they're close to age, though, so it's like, all right, split the minutes. Yeah. So you can do yeah. better. I, I want to get... Yeah, he's my twenty. Whole, he's, he's twenty four. Yeah, like my whole, I guess my whole point was give Knox more runways. This is like, I feel like we Franklin Aquino him. You know what I'm saying? Like you bring in Dancy, you bring in Moody, <laughs> everybody yeah. come in. You everybody, everybody plays against the guy who needs to develop. <laughs> Knox needs the shots. He needs the touches. He needs the burn to to get exactly. to the next look, level. Exactly. Like what he did today, he killed it. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But back to the point with 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 um with Marcus Morris anyway. How do you feel about the Knicks? seemingly leaning towards keeping him long term instead of moving him at the deadline. Do you feel like it's like, a waste? No, nah, I like keeping him because I really feel like he could be a a championship piece to a roster. And I think if we truly feel that we're going to develop and truly feel we might get free agents or whatever they're thinking of, he could be a pivotal part on, on a playoff push or a championship push down the road. So you don't get rid of him for just nothing. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to get rid of him and trade him, it has to be for a super value pick or it has to be for another star, like, you know, not star, but another... Rising star. Rising right. star, maybe kind of point guard or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, here's the thing. Like, like, like yo, move, if we move into the Clippers, we get Harkless or something, or maybe we get a, a first-round pick and exactly. somebody mm-hmm. and something else. Mm-hmm. We can maybe use the pick cause to package, you know, oh, the other cool. picks to get... You know, to get a higher pick or to get a else. higher boom, a higher pick, 
a superstar. A superstar. I'm saying we're in a, a point guard. To be honest, we're in a really good spot that the Knicks haven't been in in a while. Yes. Yeah. We have young players. We, we got moves. picks. We can really do a lot. Which yeah. is why I'm scared of this it. news. <laughs> yeah. Like this drama thing is crazy. It's scaring the crap out of me, man. It's scaring the crap out of me. Now, what happens, though, if... What happens, because this can happen, Knicks don't, you know, the Knicks don't trade him. He stays here. Mm-hmm. And he leaves. Because, yeah. you know what? He turned down a deal to the... What was the Spurs? Clippers? Spurs. 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 Yeah. Was it three years, 40 million? Mm-hmm. Or oh, two two years. Yeah, yeah, I think it was two years. Two years, like 20, twenty million. Yeah, yeah, two, two years, twenty years. million. It's two years. Yeah. So, uh, how much are you going to offer him? So, is 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 the question? And will he be? And will he take it? Well, mm-hmm. he turned that down with the Spurs because of the distance from Philly, and he wanted to be home with. Would he have a sick uncle or something like that? He wants to be. That scares him? me though. But oh, he has a sick uncle. Is that the uh, something like that? Somebody in his family he wants to be really close to because they were like sick and things. That's uh, why. That's why he decided to. He turn might hold down a grudge if, he, if he's shipping the Clippers. He <laughs> might hold a grudge. Yeah. Yo, he's a sick family member, and I can't. Yo, I'm he's pretty like, sure. Yeah, I'm going to Brooklyn. Like that. Yeah, he <laughs> wanted to be near his uncle or or his mom. So I don't really remember, but I remember it was something. He wanted to be near family because. He was going through some personal family issue thing. Oh, that's, that's some harsh drink yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. Damn, man. I feel mad heartless now, yo. Oh, oh man. Oh, God. You know what, though? Uh, <laughs> too many years of suffering. If we're going to pick, trade him. <laughs> we got FaceTime. You nickel of business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> FaceTime him. No uh, FaceTime. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but honestly, but honestly, I feel like if you're going to trade him, I mean, if you if he's gonna leave here, his only options are Boston and Philly. Those are the only places really close where he can still be near the family. Right. And either one of them could afford him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. his staying with the Knicks is his best bet. That's and he true. loves the city yeah. and everything else. I think if you keep him, he'll he'll sign an extension For because sure, it yeah. guarantees he's close to his family. I'm good mm-hmm. fifteen and twenty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If he wants something on. Mm-hmm. After that, that, no. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Fifteen yeah. to twenty. I could do yeah. fifteen to twenty. Even number six. No. <laughs> Number six, yeah. uh, three point shooter in the NBA, 15, 20 million, yeah. giving, you, giving us 18 yeah. a game, yeah, plays him, defense. Yeah, give him Maybe we make some moves. You can play power forward. Who knows? He changes the mentality yeah, okay. of our team, makes it a bruising team. Mm-hmm. I can see that. I can you know see know that. I mean? So yeah. I, I love Marcus Morris. Like I said, I think he could really be a pivotal player on a championship push, playoff push. Not with this team we have, but on a team general. And if you really think we're building in the future, and but really, he'd be a nice piece to have. So I don't think there should be a rush to get rid of him unless mm-hmm. you really think you're getting something spectacular back. And back to this painful drumming conversation, did you want to add something? The only thing I wanted to add was that um, I would try to have a talk with him and be like, yo, you know what, we need assets. So, you know, we're going to trade you for this, you know, for the second half of the season, but we want you back here. Because yeah, yeah, business like at the, at, Because like at the current moment with the Knicks, it's like, yo, we need to build this roster. And the more assets we have, like well, like we said before, we could possibly trade for a superstar player down the line or just build through the draft. You know, hopefully this upcoming draft, there's a lot of good players, you know, yeah. that's going to be there. And mm-hmm. sell him on the, listen, we want to put you in a position to win, so we'll trade you to a really good team. Yeah, exactly. So maybe you can make that push for them and then come back. So. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. And, and my thing is, my thing is too, is like, he can, like the, the whole drumming thing, if it's, if it's drumming at center, Morris at power forward, some shooters, shooter, mm-hmm. RJ. And a good point guard. Mm. Are we winning the chip? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nah. I'm winning. I want to no. win the chip. I just don't want to go to the second round of the playoffs. Yeah. But if we bring back another piece with it that we can use, maybe Canard, it won't be as painful. But if we get drumming, Morris definitely comes off the bench. You think so? I think he's just moving the power forward. Nah, he gets mass minutes, but off the bench. Like, he won't start. Nah, I think he plays the four. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's You need that, that, you need that scorer. Yeah. Mm hmm. If RJ's not, RJ's not there yet. Yeah, RJ's not there yet. But uh, play him at the four, Bullock, and then good to go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I guess that can bring us to our our next topic, which is. The the youth the youth movement or the lack <laughs> yeah thereof yeah mm-hmm. like okay I um I'll say this about the Fizz and the Miller thing I I'm still Team Miller I saw mm-hmm. some crazy takes out there not crazy takes but I seen some people like see Miller's not that good 
Like, we lost five in a row. And Knicks fans are crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, well, besides the Suns, who we lost to? Lakers? The Lakers? Clippers. Championship caliber <laughs> team? The Utah Jazz. Jazz, who's been on the greatest <laughs> run. I, I heard some crazy statistic where they were saying that um, they had the best net rating of any team yep. in the league yeah, in, in, over the last 10 games. Yeah, we yeah. lost to every team we were supposed to lose to. Exactly. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we lost to every team we were going, what? A negative ten. Yeah, they had us yeah. losing by ten points. And at least we kept it pretty decent, except I think we got blown we could have won that bad Clippers by game. the Clippers. Yeah. Their Clippers no, the Lakers, game we win. We could have won. Lakers. That yeah, the Clippers game could have won. It was the Lakers that smacked. Yeah, up. Lakers yeah. smacked us, but the Clippers. Yeah, we had a really close game. So it was yeah. like, what more did you want? Exactly. They, they projected to smack us. They projected yeah. to smack us. <laughs> and we got it. He kept, he kept it close. Marcus Morris went off. He yeah. went Morris Mello. And yeah, he almost real. dropped a 40 points. And those, pro- yeah. and those projections are made by professionals with data and analytics to back it up. So if exactly. they project you to mm-hmm. get blown out, you're gonna get seven blown. times out of ten, you're getting blown yeah. out. Yeah. Boom, take that for data. Also, yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So people are like, oh. Some people are like, oh, the Miller... The Miller, uh, the Miller cachet has worn up. Because you know, you know, when a new coach comes, people say, well, the, the player's more tentative and, and they're more receptive to, to coaching and they get that little bump yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that you yeah. get from a new coach. Well, yes, yes, that happens. I think we're past that now. I think we're past that. I think, I think you can, people who can see the game and know the game can see the difference between the coach getting you hyped and, yeah. and actual offensive sets being played for the first time. Yeah. Oh, and segue, I'm, I'm going to have somebody else um, next week who's actually wrote a, a really, really good article on the difference between um, Fizdale's offense and Mills' offense. He gets into the, the details of like the different offensive sets he's won, like Chin mm-hmm. and all this other stuff yeah, I don't yeah. know nothing about, but I can see it's working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's going to get into the technical stuff. Stay tuned next week episode. Yeah, well, people are so hung up on the old saying, you know, the new mop mops better the new broom sweeps better than the old broom and then once it wears in you get the real feel of the broom Mm. that's the same thing people try to do with the coaching and they try to do with the players but the human aspect to it will always make that not true you know what i mean the human aspect is not uh, an an inanimate object it's soul it's hard it's you believing in someone different than you believed in another person and him having a different perspective on the game. And let's say they ran the same play, but one coach told you, you need to cut straight. And mm-hmm. you cut right into a defender, and he stops you and kills the play. And the other coach goes, whoa, whoa. from my perspective, you need to cut wide. Mm-hmm. And he cuts wide, and all of a sudden, now that's an alley-oop. Now that play and that set is good mm-hmm. versus the other coach had you cut straight in. Yeah. That play is terrible. Mm-hmm. It's and all just, about perspective. And like the little things that Miller does, like every time uh, Mitch gets a foul, he makes him run laps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Miller's not an old mob, is what he's saying. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, you, <laughs> just just to cut off for a second, I think that was probably like the way he started that out. I think that was probably the most philosophical shit I've ever heard this show <laughs> in my life. <laughs> 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 All right, Eric, Eric Stradamus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying that's just that's how people look at it, man. That's yeah. why when you hire somebody new in a job, everyone's like, you give him a month, see how yeah. he really works yeah. in a month mm-hmm. when he knows where the cameras are and he knows mm-hmm. where he can pull his phone yeah. out. Yeah, I'm gonna give you three months so your medical comes in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why you get hired and you're on six months probation. Oh, I didn't do anything wrong yet. Like, exactly, but you will. But, but <laughs> we know, we, we know feel you. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like that. It's pretty much the same thing. Nah, I feel you. But okay, so where I'm going with it is. I have overall liked what Mill has brought to this team so far. But what I see though is the the youth them. They 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 haven't gotten minutes. We need that lineup. That Frank, RJ, Wooten, Mitch, Mitch, Knox. Knox. Yes. Like mm-hmm. Woo, yeah, Woo, yes. Woo, yeah, Woo, Woo, yes. 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 <laughs> Woo, gotta be on the scene. But I don't mean to be the the Here we go. You don't mean to go ahead. No, I don't mean to be, the, I don't mean to be the killer of you know of bad news, but All that's right, not that's not gonna happen with Miller because Miller, you gotta remember, is 
like you said before about the GMs, he's coaching for his job. Yeah, it's different. You get a coach in here who's promised the five years, and you you know you get a Mark Jackson, a mm-hmm. Van Gundy. Uh, Please, uh, I could name a bunch of coaches, but my point is, someone who's established and someone who's not afraid to lose their job and not afraid to lose the money and everything else, they're mm-hmm. gonna play the youth and be like, "Listen, you want to develop this? I was done. This dude's an intern. Like, yeah, yo, man. we gotta at least keep it close. And when some veterans go in, I, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I can't That's get fired. Exactly I don't want to get happening. fired. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see if maybe I could extend my job." The same yeah. thing is so happening with this that's that's gonna hurt the youth. That's mm-hmm. gonna hurt the youth development. Yeah. You gotta really either tell this coach, listen, we like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Here's a two year extension. Get him comfortable mm-hmm. so he can start developing. Or you tell him, listen, sorry, we're bringing in so and so because we believe in the movement of so and so and let that person establish himself, even if it's mid season, mm-hmm. tank with him and let him develop the youth. Now you're it's right. Either or you can't play the middle fence with it because it's not. He's yeah. playing for his yeah. job. He's coaching, I'm sorry, for his job. That's a fact. He's yeah, not, exactly. I, actually, He's maybe not. it's a good thing, like, the young people got to show up and practice. Show up and practice. Show Miller that you can ball out. You know what it is? Earn your minutes. You know what it is? It's not, it's not even the practice part. It's like, Miller has very set rotations. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. sure. And there's certain times in the game where the youth or the younger players, they're playing better than they usually do. Are yeah. and I'm like, oh, this is the time to ride it out. Yeah. Give them an extra two, three, four minutes right here to yeah. see if we can and then do. And they get pulled. And then they get pulled, and you're Knox, like, Knox especially gets that a lot. Like when yeah. Knox yeah. had that, um, uh, I want to say against Charlotte was it where he had that, um, the crazy block where he fell down, then he ran up the court, got he it, dumped it in, mm-hmm. and yeah. then came down again and banged the three. Like exactly, he had like, yeah. He had like three, four plays in a row of like, and then he sat two minutes later. Yeah. And yeah. then you're looking at it like, he should ride the half ride out. Let out. him ride yeah. the whole second quarter out. That exactly. man's on fire. Like, it's, it's, yeah. let him get tired. You have a whole half of him to sit. Hell yeah. But then it's like, he, like you said, stuck in his rotations. Oh, he got his minutes. I got to put yeah. whoever he put in. I can't remember off the top yeah. of my head. He got to be put in so he can mm-hmm. get his minutes because this is my rotation structure. And Yeah, I think that's pretty much my only beef for Mike Miller right now because, like, he'll see, like, young players will be playing. And, like, I've seen games where, like, yeah, knocks that one game. And then I've seen, like, Mitch in other games, Frank in other games, and they be showing out. And it's, like... Once that time lim- once that time comes where he's like, where he's like, you know what, I gotta put him back my veteran, he puts him back the veteran and doesn't make the young player right out. Well yeah, I'm like, yo, if yeah. he's playing good, let him play. Let him play. Exactly. Like because he he came to him, he was like, Listen, uh, I'm, I'm I think Berman. Shout out to Berman. He gets him on <laughs> nerves sometimes, but then sometimes I'm like, Yes, Berman. <laughs> sometimes he gets him on nerves, sometimes he shoots straight from the hip. And he asked him, he was like, Yo, are you are you concerned with developing like the young guys? <laughs> and he's like, I think like most NBA teams I want to do both. I want to win and develop the young guys. And they, and then Berman would be like, so why'd you play knock six minutes a day? <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, uh, it was hard to get him back in because he was in the groove and bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And I was like, oh, yeah. But the one thing good about Miller is, is I like his sets when he does play the young yeah. guys. And yeah. I also <clears throat> like his um his ability to notice situations like we need a timeout. We need yeah. a timeout here. Yeah. They're on a little run. We need a timeout. We need to regroup, get the young guys back in. All right, put them back out. Mm-hmm. Have them run a special set where they yep. can get an easy mm-hmm. bucket, get the confidence back. Like he, He's very good with that. Yeah. Well, I feel like Fizdale lacked tremendously. Oh, yeah. He's oh, popping yeah. with the timeouts, man. Don't, yeah. don't mess up for two minutes. Oh, tweet. No, nah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like about him because I feel like Fizdale was, um, for a lack of better terms, a fan of the game mm-hmm. when it came to coaching. Like he was, mm-hmm. he was caught a lot watching, like, Wow. What a play! What mm-hmm. like? Oh, what do you mean? What a play? Call timeout. Exactly. What like, yeah. a break. We need. We need structure. We need a, a better play call. We need. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. just caught, and then all yeah, of a sudden, right. oh, we're down by thirty. Oh, yeah. timeout! Timeout! Time out. Time out. He wasn't it. Timeout. Yo, DVR like, the game, my guy. Call timeout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I, I think when it comes, to, I think when it comes to calling timeouts, he's from the school of Phil Jackson because Phil. That's what Phil Jackson did a lot of times with his teams. He's like, you know what? Y'all getting smacked by twenty. Y'all stay. Out, y'all stay out there. Get smacked by twenty. I want to see y'all come back into the game, but it's like, yo, nah, that works. Uh, it's better yeah, exactly. when you have Kobe. Exactly. <laughs> like, like the team we have right now, that shit is not going to work. That works when you have Pippen, George. Jordan, Rodman, Harper, exactly. where you have Fisher, Horry, Shaq. Kobe. Yes. When you got R.J. Yeah. Barrett, Knox, and mm-hmm. time out. Exactly. <laughs> Down by 12. Time out. Time out. <laughs> Get back on the court. Dribble. Time out again. Exactly. exactly. What's going on? 5-0 run? Time out. 
<laughs> five minute timeout. No, it's only thirty. I'm a five minute timeout. <laughs> right. Commercial break. Yes. <laughs> Run this ad. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Geico, save your money yeah. on car insurance or something. Yeah, yeah. I was tight. I was tight when Frank had 16 points. I was like, oh, here we go. Yo, here we go. Oh, he what? Pull him. Yep. I was like, wait, you gonna pull him now? Yeah. Why now? Yeah, he was one of his hot moments. I yeah. definitely wouldn't have left him in, and I'm saying that as a person who really don't like Frank. Whoa, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> now, now here we go. I, I'm a good host because I, I purposely <laughs> talked about Frank because I knew he didn't like him, and I wanted, <laughs> and I wanted to throw the alley. So. <laughs> now, nah, Frank is... He's, Sound off, E. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> no get, it, get it off your chest. Get nah, it, if, you, if you look at the percentages and the plus minuses plus when he's in and everything like that, he hurts the team. He's a very stagnant ball handler, which is not what we need for this team. For this team full of athletic young players, we need somebody who could drive, dish out can move the ball around without keeping it on top but that's one thing he moves the ball around but he only swings it he mm. never puts in he never puts to the post cut give it back to me dish it back out the ball doesn't have dimensions when he's on the court if you ever watch it always stays outside or he's throwing an alley it's only two dimensions it, it, there's so much other space on the court I feel that like he he's been utilize. looking better though like he, he has been looking he, better he's but, been looking a lot better like he's actually like pick and roll is way better than like Anytime we I mean, they allowed him to play pick and roll. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be real. When KP was here, they actually let him play pick and roll. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I would see guys be like, well, Frank can't even play pick and roll. I was like, they're not letting him do it. But yeah. he came in here setting up people with pocket passes. Yeah, and but I'm just saying, if you look at the analytics and the, the space on the floor that he occupies, he's going to be one of those really good role-playing point guards in the regular season. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to playoffs where the game slows down and you need somebody who can penetrate and dish and move the lengths of the ball and get into those mid-range pockets to open up other spots and all that, he's going to he's gonna be a detriment to the team every time. I can see what you're saying. I think he needs so, a floater. Yeah, that's a, that's a, what he definitely needs. A he's consistent mid-range shot, and he needs mm -hmm. to realize, pause, that his arms are mad long. Take is, advantage is that, of that. Is that pause worthy? That's pause. I, I, I pause worthy. Well, well, if he said, well, you know what? The arm, the arm part kind of saved you, but if he was like, yo, pause, he's mad long. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that would have been pause. That's pause worthy. Yeah, that would have been pause. But the arms, the arms. Yeah, the arms yeah. Saved just to be you. safe, pause. Yes, yes. Just to be safe, pause. Some new arms is long. So, Sophia, our camera woman, she 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 co-signed. She was like, nah, that's like that's good. Arm is mad long as that pause worth that. Okay, all right. Thumbs good, up. Right, yeah. like, I still put it out there anyway. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Co-signs. <laughs> but nah, I just feel like Frank's Frank's play style and how he is is he I don't think he'll ever develop past being a role player. And I really mm. feel like you know what? we need a star point guard in order to run this offense. I think it's I'm I'm okay with him not. I'm okay with him being a role player. That's the mm -hmm. thing. Like I'm okay not with at the him pick being we picked him at. Look, I'm gonna not everybody from. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. Number eight picks don't hit all the time, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, like, didn't we pass eight. on Donovan Mitchell? Yes, yeah. we well, did. Well, yeah, a lot of teams pass on Donovan Mitchell, though. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're the only ones. <laughs> We're the only ones. People pass, passed on Mitchell Robinson too, but no one talks about that. Yeah. Anyway, exactly. <laughs> I don't mind him being a role player if, if his ceiling is I can hit open threes, <clears throat> I can run pick and roll, and I'm not an elite driver, but I can get into the paint from time to time mm -hmm. and nine people up. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think and as, as long as it comes with the defense, Listen, his defense, man, I'm that's, okay. That's going to keep him in the league. His defense forever. is what's going to keep him in the league for I, a long I time. Think, but. I think what would be interesting and what I would like to see is him is him playing alongside an elite point guard. Mm. I feel because I feel like as if you know you have a two point guard lined up in the backcourt, you have your elite point guard that'll you know handle all the you know running the offense mm -hmm. and creativity and this and that then you have Frank as a backup where it's like you okay you know he can create a little bit himself and at the same time I think that's when he's gonna have to develop his jumper too because he's gonna probably be moved to the two so he's gonna have to develop his jumper and I feel mm -hmm. like and like then that. he could be that defensive stopper in the backcourt where it's like okay you need him you, okay so if you want to if you want to rest your lead point guard on defense you have Frank guard the other the opposing team's best player in the backcourt that should be a great idea to be honest like, if we could have brought back D. Rose, if we just signed him back, mm -hmm. I feel like it would have helped Frank a lot offensively. Yeah. Not Moutier, not Trey Burke. <laughs> <What is that? laughs> Even though Moutier killed us. Yeah. Yo, I'm telling you, what he, yo, he went Bruh. to Utah, he's a yeah. different player right now in Utah. But I don't know. I just think y'all are kind of making my point. Like, he's not really the point guard for us. No, I like didn't. Saying no, I think we're, I think we're, I think. Well, you're saying to move him either into this, to 
backup point guard role or move him into shooting guard position. I think that's what I'm saying. He's not the point guard for us. He just analytics and everything says it. He's just not. I think there's a difference between now if you saying not the point guard for us and not a like a, a star point guard. That's yeah. like two different well, things. Well, yeah, but I think it's both because we need the star point guard. The way we run our offense and the kind of players we have, mm-hmm. we don't have a Kevin Durant. We don't have. Uh, LeBron, we don't have a Luka Doncic, which would be a star point guard. But you know, what I mean, you don't have somebody that you run the offense through, and they become so dominant that you have to put so much focus on them that people get the easy backdoor cuts and people get the easy, you know, mid range jumpers and things like that. Mm-hmm. You need a point guard who's going to facilitate and change the dimensions of the game. And Frank's just mm-hmm. not that. I feel that's like my he, point. He is though. Like, but he could I f- be. Like... I feel like, but that's what I'm saying. What you're saying, he could be or whatever. Like the potential of him is why I think you should just trade him. Get get a better pick, get better things because I'm gonna be honest with you, he's gonna fall short. I I, I don't know because I, feel, I, I, feel, I, I, I could foresee I, I, he's I not gonna like ever if, be. I it. feel like if anything, he's at least a solid backup point guard. If anything, at it, least I don't think it's a bad thing. And I also think that if you have it doesn't, I don't even think a guy who makes plays necessarily even has to be a point guard because if you look throughout the NBA, it's not like every guy who's won a championship has like this all star point guard. It's like no, it's usually some all star shooting guard, small forward, mm-hmm. and the point guard. Sometimes it's a spot up shooter. <laughs> you know what I'm Not saying? Not even that. Like, look at Boston when they won the chip. They had Rondo. Yeah. I'm saying so. It's but, like, it, but it look at the, but look at the point of yeah. but yeah. look of the point I was saying. It has nothing to do with the shooting. It has nothing to do with being a star. It's someone who changes dimensions of the game. What is Rondo best known at? Changing the dimensions, the fakes, the act like he's going for a lip, dish mm. it back, the put it behind his back. Oh, he didn't lay it up. The Changing the dimensions. You don't know where the ball's going to go. Is he going mid-range? Is but he going corners? Is he moving? Pierce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, but, but, and a Ray Allen. I, I, I do have of a course, question, but though. he changed the dimensions. For how, That's so why how do you, how you explain the, the Clippers with Patrick Beverly as a starting point guard? Boom. Mm. Patrick Beverly also, like I was saying before, where you have a star like Kawhi Leonard and a star like Paul George, who at any point in the game could take over six to five minutes. That's what I'm saying, And though. you start looking at him like, we, he scored five, six possessions in a row. We got to... Then all of a sudden, when you give it to Patrick Beverly, all he has to do is a quick backdoor cut to somebody else. That's to, what I'm... That's your, but, you're proving my point. Yeah, but Frank, Frank would do that. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. my but, point. My point is, my, you don't have to have the point guard do that. But my if point Frank is, if, like... We don't have Robert Ory, How many shots did Robert Ory hit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just being a, a standstill three-point shooter. Correct. And But mm-hmm. who did Robert Ory have around him? He had Shaq, Kobe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm saying, I'm we saying, if we that. get, if we get, if we, so say something happens, say we draft like uh, Anthony Edwards or maybe RJ Barrett turns to something because he can make plays for other people, where the offense is running through them and his friend can just do his secondary thing or just spot exactly. up and shoot. Then I think we'll be in good shape, which is why I don't think we should trade him. Well, that's my point. But the point you guys keep missing. You was talking about giving him secondary roles and backup point guard roles and stuff, which is cool. If that's what y'all want to keep him for, fine. If you want him to be your starting point guard or the starting position, he's not that guy. But my point is, like you were saying before, he has the potential to be that and everyone still looks at it, which is why he's a good trade piece. Before people realize he's only a backup role and he's never going to be that, trade him while he's still getting attention <laughs> and get something back for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. I'm telling you, we're uh, gonna come back. We're gonna come back a couple years later, and you're gonna be like, "Yo, he really flopped." I'm just being honest. I don't think I he can. I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. I feel, I feel never, like DSJ has a, a a higher flop ceiling. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. DSJ, because of, DSJ he doesn't have anything to hold his hat, hang his hat on right now. It seems yeah. like. Well, I also think with DSJ, it's more of a mental thing than anything. I think from him getting hurt and he was like getting a little hot, then he got hurt. Then his stepmother, I want to say, mm-hmm. died, yeah. and they booed him when he came back. And right now, he's just mentally not about basketball. His mind's somewhere else. And let me tell you something: as a former player, when your mind is on something else, especially the passing of a loved one and things like that, there's two different kinds of people. There's people like Kobe who get in the gym when someone passes and said, you know what, I'm getting that much better to make them happy. And then you get other people who get in the depression, like, is ball even worth it? Mm-hmm. Me traveling left and right across country, out of country, doing all types of things. Is it even worth it when I'm missing time with my family who could pass any day? Mm-hmm. Then it starts getting in your head and you don't even want to play no more. And you know what it is, too? That's my thing with DSJ in general. I fear his mental makeup because... And and I and, I'm and that not was even, from college. And that was from... Ex- <clears throat> That was from college. Right that, out of my mind. That, was, say it. that was one of his big things in college. That was exactly. the first thing why he didn't go a high pick like he should have. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. there's mental fortitude. There was a lot of times he got yelled at by the coaches, pouting on the bench, mm-hmm. walking off, you know what I mean? Doing a lot of turnovers, then getting mad, showing it, and making it ruin the rest of his game, not coming back playing defense. That was a big thing in college, but they said mm-hmm. he got over that. 
And that was supposed to be his thing when he went with the Mavs. He's over that. Uh, but hey, mm-hmm. if you already show a little bit of mental weakness, <clears throat> no offense to him because I don't personally know the guy, but I'm just saying based upon looking on the outside in and then you lose a family member or something, bro, it could take his toll. I, I definitely knew and 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 that doesn't excuse him him playing bad. I'm saying trade, hey, trade him as well. I'm just saying, yeah, but I was just gonna say get him out. But get him out. <laughs> yeah, get him out the team. But I understand. I, I as the human emotion part of it, you understand. Mm-hmm. Like I understand, I understand that too. And to that's me, how that's why he flopped. To be honest with you, like I feel like a change of, when it, when when people say a change of scenery can help. Like mm-hmm. he's a prime example yeah. of him and faults. A change of scenery mm-hmm. probably could help him. A change of scenery and a step back from the game a little. The way, like, I don't know. I feel like he just needs the, the runway, maybe, mm-hmm. to be with no interruptions. Because, mm-hmm. but it, it's, that's the mental fortitude part. He needs, he needs, because when Luka Doncic got there, I feel like he got to his head. Yeah. yeah. When uh-huh, Frank is that. getting minutes over him with Albert Payton, I think that got to his head. Mm-hmm. So I don't think. I think the best team for him, honestly, is the Suns. Mm. This is where he mm. needs to be, where he has the open court with Booker the shooter. He could dish it into Aiton and kind of step back, and then he gets those open space fast breaks that they run, those sets he likes to run, and he could get his fast break points and maybe get his confidence maybe, back. Maybe if Ricky Rubio is not going to, you know, <laughs> threaten him. Just get him out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care where he goes. Get him out. <laughs> Yeah, he's on to get him out. <laughs> get him out, bro. I mean, I mean, a, there got to be a taker somewhere. Yeah, no, he's somewhere. Has, like, there. Are, there are takers. Has been has been reported that there there's are takers, takers for there's him. Taker Wolves are there's interested. Takers for him and for Frank. Detroit, Detroit for him. <laughs> I'm keeping Frank. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm keeping Frank. It's only it's yeah. only year three Frank coming from France. Like you got to yeah, give him time. Three, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for people Frank to be here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, DJ could go. There's a lot of people just go, bro. Like, just get out the team. We're trying to build something great. There's too many people here. Mm-hmm. Get them out. You know what? Off the cuff question. Freestyle Fridays. It's not Fridays. It's Sunday. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Direction of the team. What do you think the Knicks should do right now at this moment? Do you have a, a nothing? A, a nothing. 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 Wait till draft day. Okay. That's what I want. Yeah. See what pick we got. See who we draft. And then decide. So you're looking at all these rumors. There's nobody. Don't you do want. nothing. There's really, it's really pointless to do anything this year. What are we gonna do this year? We wins. Win. No. For, the, for, the, for the playoffs. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. Get out. <laughs> yeah, like, get out the first round now. Do nothing. Wait till draft day. See who we draft. See if we get a Lamelo Ball or something like that. You don't that. want to throw all your picks at uh, D'Angelo Russell. No. Absolutely uh, not. See what point guard. Oh, uh, right now. I'd be I'd be a selling team, and depending on the deal, if 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 we can get picks in return, I would probably make the deal. I'm not training for no player like Andre Drummond or anything like that. Fact. Right right now, just straight selling. And Sell mode. Mm. Exactly. I would trade for picks and things like that, but honestly, right now, I don't even think they should do that with the rush of the deadline and make a, a gun to the head move that could hurt us. The best thing the Knicks need to do is is solidify our coach. Mm. Either say mm-hmm. we're going with Miller, say we're doing whatever. If, if you're going to fire Miller now, fire him, do whatever, solidify the coach. So this way the coach could have this half of a season of tanking or whatever you want to call mm-hmm. to put his sets in and get us ready for next year. And also he could tell you this is the kind of player I'm looking for to build with mm. when the draft comes. <laughs> because if you have Miller as your coach and he's telling you, listen, this is what we need to draft, then you draft that, then you get Mark Jackson or someone else and they're going... I don't know why you didn't take so and so because right, this doesn't right, work right. with my sets. Then you just wasted a pick. Yeah, unless yeah. you, unless we get a top three pick and ends up being a superstar, then you mm-hmm. can't waste someone with. Can we just go with Mark set. Jackson, bro? Whatever. Uh, can go we with Mark just Jackson, like this is so stupid? Ah. Man. Just get Mark. Go with Miller. Uh, man, I don't. Nah, just you gotta pick Mark somebody. Jackson, pick somebody and give them the years so yeah. we can start developing our players and doing it the right way. You Having an interim coach and. Uh, a GM who's on the fence and a president who's on the fence and mm-hmm. who are we picking and then all of a sudden you pick something and then they get thrown out and then now the next person stuck with it i.e. you know Phil Jackson with you know Frank and then and we don't know where we want to put him what was his idea to run him in the triangle but we're not even running the triangle no. anymore <laughs> so don't bring like, that up again yeah. well it has to be brought up I mean Milton run triangle but run from story learn yeah. from, yeah. Yeah. So you learn from yeah. these things the thing is I'm an avid Mark Jackson supporter yep. and I would love for Mark Jackson to coach the Knicks but I don't know like the way I've seen uh, Mike Miller coach his team so far I'm willing to give him a shot and be like you know what I agree yes and, you know sign him to a contract <laughs> and see what he can do with the, with the squad consistent Consistency, please. I was saying coach from one year to another. Give him his consistent spot or 
put in who you want to give the consistent spot to. Let's not lally gag on that because we don't got the time. Absolutely. Especially if we want to try to develop and these next couple of years are going to be our big picks. I don't have the time as a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying we don't have time as far as these next picks, these next two years are probably the best chance we got of really developing in the draft, i.e., you know, warrior style. Mm, with Curry, mm-hmm. Clay, Draymond, you know, we gotta mm-hmm. we gotta draft something like that. Mm-hmm. Not saying like that because that's a one in a million. Yeah. yeah, but you gotta draft that those pieces could work together and develop and become something big. And your first two picks, you could argue, was R.J. Barrett and Knox. Yeah, are mm-hmm. your two picks to kind of and Mitch. Yeah, and yeah. Mitch, even yeah. though Mitch is kind of the sleeper, he wasn't really part of the plan. He just lucked out kind of in the second mm-hmm. round, but. And we'll, we'll touch on a draft. We'll touch on a draft like in a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But my vision, at least right now for the team, is kind of like a long line. Just, just sell, man. First of all, we need to cut Wayne Ellington, or maybe even get him out. Maybe even, <laughs> yeah. even. I don't. Can we even move I, Ivan? Who's the two-way contract? Oh, dude? I, Ivan Rab. Ivan Rab. Yeah. We we got people. In the G League right now, who kind of fallen? We got moving out there. We got oh, Mar Peters who had yeah. eight threes in the game. And to be honest, make some room on this roster and bring we, these guys up. We have our second round pick who hasn't played nothing G League or anything at all. <laughs> and in the summer league, he really balled out. Um, yeah, there's no room for him. As Dinkus, I- I- Iggy. Iggy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Got, so, like you said, sell. I think I think we can all agree on that. We should sell, yeah. try yeah. to get some picks, and play Iggy. Find room for these young kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We should definitely scale but up. They're, the, but the they're not going to do that until we get coach. The thing is, why isn't Iggy getting minutes in the G League? The though G League that, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm like, if he's not going to play, no, no, the NBA, in no, the NBA. Iggy is getting Jiggy in the G League. Exactly, but that's my whole thing, though. Like, why don't you consistently play him, play him in the G League then? Especially since he's, he's not being playing successful. Yeah. No, he's not playing every game, but he he he'll, he'll stop by and drop a cool twenty three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the Knicks PR is like, what is it like? Every day it's like, all right, Iggy's back up. Yeah, all right, Iggy's back down to the to the G League. All right, he's back up now. Just stay, just <laughs> yeah. stay there. You, you, you just stay there. Exactly. Yeah. Develop there. That's why it's called the developmental league now. Yeah, mm-hmm. but this is... This, I mean, this is the other thing about Miller. is like when guys like Morris are out and you're like, all right, here's room one way. That's the time for, for Iggy. And that's the time for... Especially that Utah game. We were down by 20 points. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's like a quarter left. And Iggy hasn't played all game. Go. But I think yeah. he's using the injuries as more of like you were saying before to see how it works when Randall's in the game and Morris isn't, and Morris is in the game and Randall's and because one's hurt and trying testing to lineups test and the things yeah. instead of doing the development. Because like I said, he don't care about development. His his job is guaranteed for the next what three months. Yeah, you're maybe. right. You're he doesn't right. care about development. He ain't gonna be around to see the development. Now you're right. He's trying you're to right. secure something now. You're right. The, yeah. the dude, so everybody getting fired is. Yeah. He'll be a dope assistant coach with Mark Jackson. <clears throat> he would. I think Mark Jackson would be a dope assistant coach for <laughs> <laughs> That's a drag. All right. <laughs> I'll just say you know, you, know you know what it is too. I love Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, okay, to be honest with you, Mark Jackson has that fizz appeal, right? Where like everybody just galvanizes around them and you want him to to win and the players yeah. love him and everybody doesn't talk anything bad about him. But then you you looked out look throughout the organization for the Golden State Warriors and everybody seems to not like the guy. Everybody but the the players love him but no one else likes him on well, the Because yeah. that's that's all political stuff though. Yeah. That's all, you know. People and but then like that he was doing um was that periscopes of him doing religious prayers? Before yeah, the exactly. And things like that. That has nothing to do with his sets and everything else because his sets and everything else developed Curry and Clay to be probably the best shooters ever. I'm glad mm-hmm. you say sets because they also did not have a good offense. Like, yeah, they mm-hmm. didn't have a good offense, but they had like the best shooters in the NBA. Mm-hmm. So there was every it's kind of like supplement them having a sucky offense by. You know, having the best shooters but, in the NBA. But then, like, <laughs> but then he developed Draymond Green, and then the sets actually started getting good. It's when they made that push in the playoffs, and they lost to San Antonio. Oh, yeah, they had a good defense. I felt like the defense mm-hmm. was... Yeah. But, yeah. I mean... But, but all I'm just saying is he sh- proved he could develop players. Yeah, yeah. he could develop... Yes, he, he can, can develop players. And that's mm-hmm. what we need. We need but, a coach who could develop players but, and run a set. But Mike Miller is also, you know... He and, could if and, he gets the job. And Mike Miller, too. I'm not clowning Mike Miller mm-hmm. at all. But give him the job, please. Yeah, or, I, 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 or I'm move on from him. One or the other. Don't have this limbo. I feel you. And we get heard of it. That's all I'm saying with that. I feel you. Mm. Okay, so I know this, this is easy situation. I'm, I, I'm, I know where I'm going to say here. But <laughs> we have to announce this because it's news. It's, it's, it's a Nick and Tom show. We talk about Nick stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Kenny Wooten. 
blocking shots, averaging three blocks a game in the G League. He's broken block records for the Knicks. Had like the he had a game. Where I think he had was it ten blocks? Ten nine? blocks, yeah. Ten, yeah, 10 blocks. blocks. It was like the most blocks in NBA G League or Knicks NBA G League mm-hmm. history, or whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah. So that guy, no surprise. <laughs> yeah, he's getting interest from other teams. <laughs> <laughs> if we lose out on Wooten. I'm going to be furious. That's what I'm saying. We got to get Ivan yeah. Rab's out contract out here. Bring him up now. Bring him up today. Yeah, yeah. like right now as I'm speaking, bring him up. Yeah. Like, and this it, is so stupid. And it would suck even more because we had him in the summer league. Mm-hmm. We, we, we we trained with him. He was hyped to be with us. Uh, he seemed like he was hurt when he didn't make the team because he took down all this Nick stuff on Instagram. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, oh, no, he's in an emotional dark space. We're going to lose him. But he's getting these tank days and... Listen, I, I've heard that he's gotten better since he's been in the G League. He's mm-hmm. just doing what he's supposed to do, developing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've, I've heard that he knows how to not get in each other's way on screens. He's able to space better with lobs and mm-hmm. things of that nature. So it might be time to bring cut him up. Wayne Elton. Like rap. They're not, mm-hmm. they're not going to bring Wooten up until after the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense to bring him up. I mean, as a fan, mm-hmm. and as basketball-wise, mm-hmm. yeah, he should have been brought up a week ago. <clears throat> right. But as far as, like, cap space and trying to trick teams into taking a lesser trade for a better thing or whatever you're trying to put out there, you bring him up, he starts killing it. Now it doesn't become, well, he's just a G League pro. No, he's doing this in the real game. We want him, and we're not discussing unless you offer him. Then you're like... We brought him up too early. Now he has to be in trade talks. So they're going to keep him in the G League and be like, what? We can lose him. We can we lose can. him. We can. Yeah. We can. So that becomes the point of do they think. Maybe we make a quick trade right now. That's what I'm that's, saying. That's what they're trying to they're do. Just bring that's him up what now. I'm saying. That, that's <laughs> why they're playing Wayne Ellington all these damn minutes, Well, yo, man. look. He can shoot. <laughs> he can that's shoot. Look, look. That's what I'm saying. With that. Shiny new shooting guard. <laughs> <laughs> three-point specialist who averages man. three points per game. Yeah. <laughs> he'll hit one. <laughs> he'll, he'll hit one really swish in it, though. One at like, one? It'll, it'll be wet. Yeah. Right. And that's the package because, you know, I'm, we look for sponsors. Shout out to guys who going to sponsor us soon. It's coming. <laughs> I'm right. if, if I'm shooting media, if I'm shooting, if I'm trying to sell him, I'm I'm giving them all video of that one jumper at different angles. <laughs> <laughs> like, see that? Ooh, from the bottom. Or just send him yeah. the Brooklyn game. Oh, oh yeah, send him to Brooklyn. Yes. Yeah. Well, yo, see. And this could be yours. You yeah. Know? yeah. So what I what I think the Knicks are gonna do, they're gonna go with their trade options, try to get their feelers out, and then when it gets close to that. All right, a day or two, you're going to lose Wooten. All right, then we're going to sign him up. Damn. They're not in a rush to do it to oh, show their hands. Be. I, w- I want to see Mitch and Wooten in the same lineup, bro. Like, but they're, they're not going to show their hands Who's scoring in the paint? No, but no one's, well, everybody, yeah, no one's going to shoot jumper in that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say this, too. Caution caution for the Knicks. January 15th, um, they those guys can be offered 10-day contracts. So it's, we don't really have that much time. We have till what's today's Sunday? Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but the way the league works, that's all you need is a day or two and a crazy trade you didn't even think of could happen. Like, we were just saying before we even came in here that we were looking at the dude from Sacramento, Bondanovich. Mm-hmm. That's Sacramento. the guy I wanted on this team, man. I want Bob- I want the other Bob- I want Bob- the one from Utah. Oh, you want the one from Utah? I want, Boyan, yeah. I want the one from Sacro. But I like, I like both, both of them are yeah, good bombs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really lose. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but that was just a matter of, you know, 15 minutes before we walked in here. Who knows what happens when we walk out of here and they're trying to trade for... Exactly. Insert and player here. So they're going to drag it as much as they can. I would be mm-hmm. very shocked if Wooten doesn't get signed by the 15th. Yeah, especially... I'd be very shocked. But very to upset. think he's going to be signed by... The next day or two, no. They're going to literally play it to the last minute to see what they can get I don't know. There's, mm-hmm. without showing their hand of how good he really is. There's two teams out there. No, because there's two. There's teams. It's been, it's been reported. Teams are already interested. They yeah. they saw. They watched SportsCenter, all right? <laughs> he was on SportsCenter as a G League player. Yeah. <laughs> like they watch it. it yeah. is, 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 I, forgot, uh, I think the Gold State Warriors and the Phoenix Suns both mm-hmm. have two-way yeah. contracts Available. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing, ready. The thing <laughs> is, though, they could they could offer it to him on the fifteenth, but um, you would have to look it up. I don't know the exact date. I know there's several days after we have to match. That's our. Mm. So they'll wait. Mm-hmm. That's just how the Knicks are. They're gonna wait till last minute with everything to see what their hands are, and then usually they fumble the cards. Perry's mm-hmm. always waiting, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, just what it is. Yeah, man. I will say this about Kenny Wooden though, because um, I got to see some of his games when he was in Oregon. Mm-hmm. 
And I remember watching the dude. I was like, yo, this dude got some bunnies. Like, he was crazy, crazy. athletic. And he looked he looked like an NBA player when he was with um Oregon. But he never, I, but, but was he undrafted? Oh, yeah, undrafted. Yeah, undrafted. Undrafted. Yeah, undrafted. undrafted. Yeah, so it's like, then it's like seeing him play in the G League. It's like, it's like seeing what he's doing is not surprising because like I've seen it at, when he was at Oregon. Mm-hmm. I just didn't see it at this scale. Like he's, it's like he kind of like exponentially just got better. He's like, like well, that dude, was his... dude, like dude's arms is going like two feet over the freaking rim. Yeah, but that, that was his big downfall in college. They all thought he wasn't coachable, they were saying. And mm-hmm. they were also saying that they see a small ceiling for his development. They didn't think he's he's a gym rat enough. They didn't think. Mm-hmm. I think him not getting Back drafted. Back to that work ethic. <laughs> but I think a lot that, of these people that not getting drafted <laughs> put the chip on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And now you see how his ceiling is higher than they thought. They also yeah. said Lamar Jackson should be a wide receiver. Like You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they really don't know. No, not at all. Sometimes they don't. That's why Mitch is with us right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep. Part, I'm gonna keep hitting that point because no one likes to talk about <laughs> For, that, yo. Nah, <laughs> Mitch, late second talking. round, yo. <laughs> exactly, late second round. Damn it, late but, second round. But to be fair, he kind of did it to himself with the whole I'm not going to college. I'm gonna work behind the scenes without you seeing and prepare myself for that and be my way. And people are like, "Well, why was that?" Is he? Doesn't good. want to be coasted. <laughs> good. I'm no, glad he did. And it worked. Yeah. It worked for us. No, it worked for us. I mean, that's how yeah. we ended up getting gems. I mean, I, I promise yeah. you, if he went to college, though, he would have been a top 15 pick. We wouldn't have got him. Oh, that's fact. Yeah. Thank God. Exactly. Thanks, <laughs> Mitch. No. <laughs> no, yeah, thank God. Great choice. <laughs> God, Mitch. I was saying. He's, just, he's tall. He probably met him. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. So, to, 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 com- to move this conversation into the youth movements. All right, we can talk about the draft now, man. All right. Draft prospects. I, I just wanted to, I wanted to kind of just touch on it, but they, they came with a list. <laughs> I'm just laying around. Everybody has top, he got the phone now. He got his top 10. I, he got a top 10 <laughs> yeah. pick. And this is part of the reason I, I know you were a, a, a big college. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't really need to write it down. I had a, But I wrote it down because some of the names are hard to pronounce. Okay. And I know mm-hmm. I'm going to need to look at the names to be like, because I'm going to be like, yo, that dude from Israel, uh, <laughs> look, look that <laughs> up. <laughs> Pick it up. I can't remember. His, e, I yeah. said double dupe. Like, yeah, him. <laughs> His jump is nice. So I pretty much wrote it down <laughs> like that. But, um, All right, yeah. so who, who wants to... Who wants to... So this is the order of talent, not the order in which I think the Knicks should draft or okay. look at. Mm-hmm. This is the order of where I think the players will go All right. when the seasons. First, I think James Wiseman, minus the having to drop out due to the money thing and mm-hmm. then all the other stuff. I still think That's he's the number one. I still yeah, I, that whole Anthony Hardaway is not really um He's not really what is that? Um, booster. A booster, but he is because he paid a million dollars for that. But all he did was help pay money so his family could move to yeah. the college because he didn't want to be away from his family. Like he didn't really give him money. He just yeah, helped. Yeah. Like it was also about situation a little bit. Just it's just like for a context. friend. It's like yeah. a, just, just so people know because yeah. I know we know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, break it down. What happened? So basically, what happened was Anthony Hardaway, or whatever, gave him money because in order to him to move to Memphis. Mm-hmm. Right, Memphis. In order for him to move to Memphis, it was across state lines. His family didn't have the money for the U Haul and things like that. So he helped pay for the move. So this way they can move, get settled in, and be in the presence of their son playing right. ball because they mm-hmm. didn't want their son to be so far and not be able to help him because they're financially in trouble. And that was like yeah. 11 years ago. So. And that was like, yeah, exactly. that was, <laughs> yeah, it was like four years ago or something like that. And he wasn't even a prospect. Definitely. No, he just did he it as a friendly himself. face because he's a friend of the family and wanted to help them. And they basically penalized him and everything. So James Wiseman dropped out of Memphis, and now he's like looking as his draft stock's gonna drop. But right, because they that's ridiculous. Because yeah. honestly, to me, he's the next Anthony Davis. To be mm-hmm. honest, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, it's I, not gonna drop because that's like the same thing when Kyrie only played like what four games in college. Yeah, but they're yeah. saying with the whole thing of you know. The same thing with Reggie Bush, kind of after he oh, took the okay, money, yeah. was mm-hmm. he cheating with the money? Do we do we want to pick him? And then Reggie Bush draft dropped because of that, not because yeah, yeah, of yeah. his talent. It's kind of the same thing, but he should still go number one. I don't care. My second pick, I'm thinking uh, Anthony Edwards. He reminds me a lot of a bigger Oladipo, and he needs to work on his mid range a little. But I really mm. think he could be a star in the league. That's Anthony Edwards is the guy that's popped out. I haven't seen yeah, a lot, yeah. but I, yeah. I see his highlights really in the yeah. game when he, yeah. they, they came back down to twenty eight. <laughs> My, yeah. my third, yeah. my third is uh, Lamelo Ball. Mm-hmm. I really feel like after watching a bunch of his games, um, 
the overseas. That I really feel like he's like a Jason Kidd slash like Jason Williams, but lengthier and taller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He has that flashy kind of playmaking. Yeah. Sets yeah. the tone. Sets the where the ball's gonna be. He controls the he depth of the court. Mm-hmm. He could yeah. shoot really well. I you heard know? like he has like the the best. I think someone say he's the best passer. In yeah, yeah, he's yeah, really yeah, good yeah, playmaker. He's like Kidd, that's kind of yeah. yeah. And then um, bad defensively yeah. though, right? Yeah, he, that's his he, one he, problem. He, he he plays passing lanes more more so than actually on ball defense. He, he tries to go for steals yeah. too much, but I feel mm-hmm. like that's also the league he's in. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. when you get to the NBA and you have to play that strong man to man, he'll he'll adapt. Okay. Um, I also think my fourth pick um in talent is uh Denny Advigia Advigia. See, this is what country is he from? Okay, he's from, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's from Israel. Um, he's really been bowling. The way I look at him, honestly, he reminds me a lot of a slow Luka Donatish. Mm-hmm. But he's still athletic could jump, but he's not like quick and light on his feet like Luka is. Luka's okay. not that fast either, so if he's no. a slow Luka Donatish. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. his court vision and his shooting and okay. things remind me a lot of Luka. All right. Then after that, I think, um, let me see, Cole Anthony. All right. Mm-hmm. I think Cole Anthony would be my next pick. I think the ice skating injury set him back. A lot. Yeah. And that hurt his draft stock a lot. And I also think it kind of makes you hesitant because how much is that knee holding up? Mm-hmm. Ever since he came back from that knee, he's been hobbling a little. Is that knee more serious than they're putting on for his draft sake? That kind of makes you weary towards him. Right. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I feel like he just wanted to come out and play because he wants to help UNC. Mm. But I think when he has that time between being drafted and training camp and stuff and his knee is fully healed, I think people are going to be upset that they passed on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then uh, I also like um, Onika Okungwu. Okungwu. He's from um, USC. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he's a big rebounder. He has like a white side type potential to me. Oh, okay. All right. he's, but he's really I good. I, this, is, this is the first person he's... I, I was like, who is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not what someone the Knicks would draft. Like, who? Him and the Israel. No, the he's, he's really good. He reminds, me, he reminds me of white side with a post game. A better okay. like hook shot, mid range mm-hmm. a little. He's really good. All right. Um, the next thing I would say is R.J. Hampton. Um, oh, yeah, for those keeping yeah. up, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh pick would be in talent would be R.J. Hampton. He gets compared to O.J. Mayo at the base of his potential, mm-hmm. and much like O.J. Mayo, he is a big risk. Mm-hmm. But if he could reach the potential that people thought O.J. Mayo could reach at the time he was coming mm-hmm. out of high school, yeah, that kid could be a problem. Yeah. Okay. Or he could be a flop. All right. You know what I mean? But, yeah, stay off drugs, kids. But, uh, uh, yeah, but exactly. <laughs> but it's his work ethic guy. You know what I mean? So you really, but he has the base potential what O.J. Mayo had when people were like, O.J. Mayo might be the next mm-hmm. Kobe, yada, yada, yada. So wait, what, so when he says, when he says like O.J. Mayo, are you saying? He's like, like O.J. Mayo potential, like when you saw O.J. Like, 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 oh, like well-rounded, because I think O.J. Yeah. is like a well-rounded he's well type round, of guy. Could do yeah. everything. Yeah. everything. Yeah, he's very, he's All like right. that. Um, the eighth is Tyrese uh, Holly Burton. He's a very lengthy point guard with a knockdown three. Um, He's a good playmaker. He just needs to grow into his body mm-hmm. and be more aggressive to fully unlock his top 10 potential because I feel like he has like a crazy arm span and everything else, but he doesn't use his body to get to the hole enough. Mm. And I don't like him as a Knicks pick because I feel like, once again, we need a player who could move the dimensions. Mm-hmm. But as far as talent and for what other teams might need, like the Clippers or any you know team like that, he, he's definitely one of the talents that you're going to look back and be like, wow, I can't believe people passed on him. Mm-hmm. Also, and I really like this dude's name, to, to be honest. I watched a couple of his games. I love it. His name is Precious. Oh. <laughs> Ach- Achiwa. Precious Achi. That's the type of name, if he's nice, yeah, yeah. sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. And Yo, if he's I, I not nice, 30, bro. <laughs> his joke's all day. Yo, Precious. <laughs> Precious is balling. But uh, as far as what he reminds me of, Precious Achua, he's like a slow bruiser with an unorthodox scoring game, much like um, power forward center. Um, power forward. Okay. He reminds me a lot of Antoine Jameson. Oh, okay, so but, not super athletic. But maybe. But to three? give him, but to give him more credit, he's a bit more nimble. Okay. He's a bit more All nimble. Right. I have that right here. He's he's definitely a bit more athletic and stuff, but. That unorthodox bruiser, mid-range on fire. Mm-hmm. When he catches fire, he'll hit like four threes in a row Got from it. a power forward position that could really like be a really good piece. All right, sure. Really mm-hmm. right. Then um, the last pick I got for 10 would be Ar- Armar Cilia. 
He's the power four from Sengo. I was actually watching him the other day. Mm-hmm. He's like 6'9 with a 7'2 wingspan. Mm. And uh, to me, he really reminds me of a more polished, at his age, Siakam. Oh, Pascal okay. Siakam. He reminds me of that, but a little more polished. And he has like an uncanny playmaking ability. Mm. Like he's really good with like the sets and getting the ball where it needs to be and mm-hmm. assist and everything else. All right, so from all those players, who would be your top three that you want the Knicks to pick? Well, that, this is, this is going to be my last thing to say. In my underdog pick, which is the pick that I think you could take out any of the last six <clears throat> people, five to six people I said, is Tyrese Maxey. Mm-hmm. I think nice. he's an underdog of the draft. I think he's a big sleeper. He's a guard from t- Kentucky. Yeah. And he really reminds me of Lou Will. Mm. He reminds me a lot of Lou Will, but with actual playmaking ability. And I mm. think he slept on He could be a really good guard. Now, as far as the top three picks, I would want the Knicks to pick. I really would like James Wiseman, which mm-hmm. probably ain't going to happen. Even though he's the powerful whatever, when you got somebody like Anthony Davis with a little bit of Durant to it, you can't pass that up. You think it's going to be... I heard he's not like as... Like flexible and he's kind of like a little stiff and he, he still a, has a lot to like learn mentally does, about he, the game. He does, but I think it comes down to the point is like when Jordan got drafted, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Trailblazers on the clock after Houston mm-hmm. and the dude's like, we need a center. Yeah, you don't draft the center. Play Michael Jordan at center. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this player's so good. You got to pick him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You got to take the... You, you think, can't, is he going to contribute right away? I don't... I feel like... I, I, I get the... I get the... I get the... Uh, I think he really can. I think his talent is okay. really, and I think his jump shot, because he didn't get to play many college games, wasn't shown as much. Mm-hmm. But based upon things they've shown him working out, I think his jump shot is very underrated. I think he's a better shooter than Anthony Davis. Mm. Wow. I got to see. Damn. Is yeah. it, yeah. it's talk, <laughs> workouts about, in the <laughs> game were two different well, things. Well, <laughs> well, I'm saying in okay. game two from what I've seen, but I'm not saying okay. he's better than Anthony Davis right. is now. I'm saying mm-hmm. he's better Anthony Davis when Anthony Davis was picked. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I thought you were talking right. about no. right now. Yeah, I was, Yo, like, that's, I was like, whoa. <laughs> no, when I'm comparing you to these other players, I'm saying at, at the time. When they were rookies. When they were 18, 19. You know what I'm saying? So I really would go with James Wiseman. My second pick, um, this is if we don't get the first pick because he's definitely going first. Um, my second pick would be LaMelo Ball. Okay. I really think LaMelo Ball with his flashiness and his passing and he could work on his defense and everything. I think his jump shot is already there, which is what we need. And I think he changes the facet of the game as far as controlling the depth on the court, which is what I think we really need, which is what I've been stressing before. Mm-hmm. And the third player I would like for us to get is Cole Anthony. I think mm. I think with Facts. the ice skating thing, <laughs> <laughs> strong home side. I think, I, think, I think the ice skating thing and everything else was really unfortunate. Unfortunate, and I think people are delving way too deep into it. I think he's gonna be great. So Cole and Anthony, then, Cole Anthony, just, just get the Cole Anthony yeah, offense, okay. offensively. How's mm-hmm. the shooting? Great. Boom. He's a great shooter. Well, the thing with Cole Anthony was he's, he's like, he's like a, a shorter guard, he's right? Smaller. Yeah, he's smaller. He's on the smaller yeah, side. Shorter but he still gets to the basket, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he's already shown he could go high off the glass. His, mm-hmm. And his bodies are crazy, though. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah he he's has athletic. Yeah. Okay. He could dunk. All right. I'm going to have to go with Anthony Edwards, LaMelo, or Cole Anthony. I feel like you can't go wrong with any of those <clears> three for the Knicks. <clears> mm-hmm. All right. I, I've heard, what I've heard is there is like a tier, and what I've heard is Anthony Edwards is the top tier. Mm-hmm. And then after Anthony Edwards, everybody is kind of jumbled. That's what I've been hearing loosely. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I feel also, like this I'm, draft is actually deep this year. Mm-hmm. I feel like we get top five, we're good. Yeah. Top five, we're I good. think we're top five, and, we're good. We're like getting I'll, somebody mm-hmm. good. And like I was saying before, if we do fall out of top five, for some reason this draft is system is terrible with these lottery bulls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we somehow get, I wouldn't mind if we got Tyrese Maxey. I've also heard... That's this, not this, what I want with our top three pick, though. I'll tell you yeah, that right now. I'll, yeah. I'll, I will flip a table. This but if we get, like, eighth, ninth pick, and we go Maxi, mm-hmm. uh, I think that would, somebody be, that would be a steal. Mm-hmm. There's also some but, names yeah, I, I've heard that I'm surprised that I didn't hear you mention. Like, uh... Minion? Oh, yes, Nico Minion you know, mm-hmm. Arizona. Yeah, I've, I've heard people really like him, his passing, and yeah. playmaking yeah. No, he's really good. But yeah. going going over my list, I tried to incorporate some of the international players. Uh, okay. Because mm-hmm. I feel like the GMs are going to do that as well. Cool, so cool. when it comes to international talent and playing already professional, sometimes mm-hmm. these guys that are on the cuff of top 10 kind of right. get 
pushed out because well this guy is overseas and he's already been playing since he was 15 and he's already in yeah, professional yeah, yeah, yeah. it setting. changed now like people see Doncic and like what KP's doing we don't like KP but what he's doing <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's probably why the Knicks even hired uh, David David and, Black and the yeah. fact that and the fact that they're playing 60 games plus mm-hmm. playing international thing versus college players who if they're lucky and get deep into a tournament maybe play 40 games that's mm-hmm. true so they these people are coming in more ready more Focused more, you okay. know, I appreciate suitable. Yeah. So, I appreciate. but Minion was one. Um, also, there was the guard from Kentucky that I didn't mention. The shooting guard from Kentucky, I forgot what his name is. He's also very good. Okay, I like mm-hmm. him a lot. He's also probably gonna be a top ten pick. Depends on what Kentucky does. Yo, mm-hmm. I saw this mock. I saw this mock list that had. Uh, speaking of overseas, <laughs> 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 that had this guy Killian Hayes. Yes. I heard, I've, I've heard I've, I've seen a mock draft where they, we, the Knicks said they would say um, someone said the Knicks would pick him third and he no ah, <laughs> I'm just watching these mock drafts no, they, they, I, say, they were saying that he's I was he's, reading scouting reports on him and stuff I haven't really watched his game play mm-hmm. myself so mm-hmm. I take my word with a grain of salt but from Seattle reports things I read about him they're basically saying he like a, a little bit more of an offensive Tristan Thompson uh, Vincent uh, Tristan Thompson. Oh man! So what I've seen in a vault. Nah, with, with our third nah. pick, you can vault that. <laughs> nah, yeah. Yeah. That. nah. nah he's a team. okay. Let me get six five dude from France. Uh, I know people with France. Some people. Have. <laughs> no. Oh my god, dude! No, I don't mind <laughs> France. No, 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 I just don't mind the one Sacre French dude we picked. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard okay, adequate score off the dribble. I see like he he has like a nice little step back, mm-hmm. uh, pick and roll guy. Um, he's a solid playmaker. He's not like an explosive. What I've heard, he's not an explosive athlete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he can. He's like he's like a little bit flashy passer. Um, yeah. Can do a little step back and but go they to were the saying hole. He's more of like a bruiser, rebounder kind of guard, and they say he's more like a small size power forward. A small size power like forward. Like a six five. He's gonna play shooting guard, but really he's gonna occupy some power forward space in the way he plays and stuff. But I also saw that he's on he's on a Greek team. I think his son he was mm-hmm. shooting really good this like twelve that's, points a game. That's why I think ninety percent from the free throw line and oh, like thirty nine percent from three or something. Something crazy. I was yeah. like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was like a, the crazy part about that was it was a big jump. From the year before, because the year before, between the three point numbers, it was nineteen yeah. percent. So I was like, mm-hmm. "Yo, we jumped from nineteen yeah. percent to thirty nine. What the?" In my opinion, he's definitely gonna be like a top 15, 20 pick. Mm-hmm. And any team that takes him before that is gonna be a little underwhelmed, especially the first couple of years. Interesting. Well, I'm I'm mm-hmm. interested in any six five, six six point guards where you yeah. can do mm-hmm. the real yeah. position as basketball. Yeah. Where if we get if we switch on other players, it's not gonna kill us, kill us. You know. What yeah. I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why I think Ball and Cole Anthony are probably the best bets because Cole Anthony, even though he does give up some size with his hops, mm-hmm. he's proven already in college he could guard small forward to your undersized power forward position. And okay. he can shoot. Like, mm-hmm. And he, his his range is infinite. Mm. He can yeah. pull from half. <laughs> Alright. All right. Yeah. Anything you want to say, Ryan? I know you got the notes out, the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do got the notes out. Um, Well, I'm basically just going to be discussing um strengths and weaknesses of Anthony Edwards and LaMelo Ball, which is like the top two mm-hmm. on yeah. my list of who I want the Knicks to draft. And things that surprised me, too, because I watched, like, a little bit of both of them. So, the scouting report on Anthony Edwards right now is that he has great athleticism, finishes at the rim over length, which is true. Uh-huh. Yeah, he has a good step-back jumper, good three-point sure. range, constant threat to score to rock, can create space and shoot off the dribble, which is true. And he has the potential to be a lockdown defender, can guard either the one, two, or the three. Mm-hmm. See, in position is <laughs> Now, here's the weaknesses, but I don't even know if they're really weaknesses because, like, I've watched him play, and I feel like he can do some of the things better than than what the um than what, than what he's being criticized about. He needs to improve free throw shooting, which is true, because he's only, like, a 60% shooter from the line, mm-hmm. so he's definitely going to have to improve that. He needs to limit turnovers, but, I mean, that's pretty much every young yeah. player. He can improve his playmaking ability, but I don't know. Like, I've seen him play a bit in college, and to me, it seems like he's a pretty good playmaker already because I've seen him make some passes, and I'm like, Dude, oh, yeah. the clip yeah. I've seen when he made yeah. a bounce pass oh, yeah. from I seen full that one. court, yeah. I was like, 
I want him. <laughs> why, they, him now. Yeah, why they criticize his playmaking though is because he does go minute stretches where the ball gets stagnant in his hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also feel like that comes from not having that great of a roster around him in college. Yeah, exactly. Him wanting sometimes. to prove his point and yeah. wanting to prove he's so good that he's pushing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when he gets into the flow of the game and his players get hot, he's very good with feeding them. And yeah. I think that criticism is a little unfair. Okay. To yeah. the situation. Okay. Yeah, another weakness is that he needs to develop his mid range game, which is true because he's, he, he either shoots the deep he either shoots the deep three or, the, or he drives to the rim. That's the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty that's much. Curry. That's the NBA. Def Def in the mid range. Pretty much. <laughs> and he said he needs to improve his off ball movement, but again, like I've seen I've seen plays in college where he's move he he moves well off the ball, like he makes proper backdoor cuts and things like okay. that. So Yeah. So it's just more of consistency. He, like, he has an idea how to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Probably doesn't have a good team around him, but mm-hmm. once he probably gets an actual NBA coach... Mm-hmm. He'll, he'll do all He'll probably yeah. do all that. Okay, all right. That makes me feel... That makes me yeah, feel then, good. then here's kind of report on LaMelo Ball. Good size and length for a guard position, which is true because the dude's like 6'8", six, 6'7". Six, yeah. so, mm-hmm. so, yeah, so he's a big guard. Um, he can. He's a good shooter off the catch or dribble. Good three point rate. Dude is basically a threat. Once he crosses half court, he can pull up from anywhere. Wait, I heard that was his weakness is the, is the shooting, which is why his his shot his, selection yeah. is his weakness. He not, can not pull from shooting. anywhere. No, yeah. no, but what, what are his percentages though? Like you can pull from anywhere, but is he hitting at a twenty percent clip? You well, know, and well, then you hit one, you're like, ooh. Well, the, percent, <laughs> the percentages dip because he's taking bad shots. Yeah, he's he's pulling like I'm playing in uh, Lithuania or whatever. I'm pulling. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but, but when but when he gets those open on the line threes, he's mm-hmm. like money. Yeah. Oh, it's like shot automatic. Shot. Yeah. I need like an advanced shot chart because mm-hmm. yeah. the shot charts I see have like three point line from here or here. But for him, I think I need like another right yeah. 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 that shows behind the three point lines. Yeah. Three point line. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. To see where the real percentages yeah. are. How many? Exactly. He, how many? He, he they're up by 15, 20. He's chucking at half. Exactly. Yeah. I need that shot chart. Yeah. That's an advanced chart. That's yeah. not even. Shark's not even invented yet. But when the game, now he might, might need the, the big four shot chart. Yeah. The four <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's a good free throw shooter, which is good. He can get to the rim and finish in traffic. True, ambidextrous, good ball handler. Mm-hmm. Good basketball IQ can create shots for others. Yeah, creativity is pretty good. He loves to play with pace. He loves to push the ball, which pace, is pace, pace. That's what which we is, need. Yeah, which is you know the current that's, NBA that's right that's now. NBA no. game, man, push it. Run. Yeah. He plays passing lanes. He plays passing lanes well, so he does get a lot of steals, and then of course pushes the ball off that and gets easy baskets. Right. And and like, he's unique where he can score the rock, but he can also impact the game without scoring. Mm. So which mm. is also another big on um, positive about That's him. That's good. Here's the weaknesses. On ball defense, I know that. But that's one of them. <laughs> that's, why he would be, that's why he would be. And, a, and one, one more Frank. strength, I just, I just want to put that. I, I think you might have missed. He's a very good screen setter for a point guard. For his size or whatever, mm-hmm. he sets really good screens. Yo, okay. he can teach Mitch how to set a screen. <laughs> <laughs> like you see a lot of the plays when he's playing, he opens the back door for so many players off his solid mm-hmm. screens because he has the length and kind of that size. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If he puts some weight on, he'll be better. Oh, yeah, snap. I get some chicken. All right. Yeah, that was, that, 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 yeah, that was also one of the weaknesses. He needs, he needs to develop oh. more upper body strength <laughs> and more chicken. Chicken. <laughs> yeah. Pop that way from Popeyes yeah. sandwich. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Too much bojang. Yo, I was yeah. supposed to be at practice, but see KFC called me. Call me. Oh, I was in line with the new chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, he needs to add more strength in his upper body and the legs. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I was skipping leg day. Ooh. Yeah, mm. he's not he's not an explosive athlete, but he's decent. Athletic. When Tyson Chandler took that picture when he skipped, when he on Yo, chest and I legs. remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like the dog from yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <with> Spike. Yeah. <laughs> My back yeah. Also, they kind of cr- they kind of criticize his shot release. They say it's pretty low, not as low as his not not as low as his brother Lonzo, but it's still low. I guess. I feel I like he's gonna get blocked pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, oh, it's like, hard to block when he's pulling right when he gets yeah. off half. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's why. I don't but know. but okay. but I mean, like, he has good handle. Like, he'll be able to create space enough for him to get that shot off. Okay. And I think he has enough arc on the shot that it'll make yeah. up for it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course, shot selection needs improvement, which was already mentioned. Okay. Okay. All right. So we just got next. Yeah, and then of course, since he likes to play on the fast break, they say he's proof. So he's prone to lose player times and turnovers. Mm. 
mm-hmm. which is understandable. And again, not a great on-ball defender. He usually roams defensively trying to pick off passes. But that's, steals. that's what I was trying to say before. Like, you pair him with Frank. He got yeah. a good on-ball defender. And then yeah. he just gets to the passing lanes. And like, then somebody know. can create the offense yeah. and Frank can do the secondary. That'll be a good matchup. Mm-hmm. That's something that, yeah. yeah he like, like you said, he can actually exactly. mm-hmm. make shots for <laughs> other people yeah. Yeah. on that level. Yeah, exactly. So that could be a good little... Yeah, and like I said, those are the top two. If I have to choose, though... I feel like Lamelo Ball mm-hmm. be- before Anthony. Just like- before Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I, was just, I was about to say something. Just like balls. Just like balls. I mean, because I said we, we, had, we had a debate of Lonzo versus um, Darren Fox. Darren Fox years ago. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, I, I like pure point guards. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, felt yeah, Lonzo yeah. was a pure point guard, but. Like, yeah, yeah, but that's past now. We, 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 we don't, don't talk know. about that no more. Exactly. Yeah. We know De'Aaron Fox is the better point guard. Swiper, yeah. no swiper. Exactly. <laughs> that's the man right there. I but but, I, but more than anything, though, I feel like his confidence is the reason why I want him in New York because I mm. feel like he'll be able to handle the pressure in New York. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I agree with that with Wiseman as well. I feel like that's another reason why I feel like he will really handle the pressure, especially all the stuff he's handling now and he's prone to the media, I think. I mm-hmm. loves Wiseman. <laughs> I can no. see. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I, I really love Lamelo Ball. That's who I. Really yeah, I feel okay. you can't go wrong mm-hmm. with Anthony Edwards, but I just Lamello, feel like, yeah. Cole. Yeah. yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah, you can't go wrong. I want, I want a point guard. Is what I want. But I'm just when that first, if we get first pick and it comes up, yeah, I'm just saying, don't be shocked when they say Wiseman. All right. Yeah. All right. I, I'm gonna keep a high on this Killian Gid. I'm gonna see if he's gonna be good or not. Even though you know, he says 15, he's because I just looked at the stats. Ten games is 12 points. Um, 12 points a game, 39 percent from three. Mm-hmm. He's shooting four threes a game, which is oh, shoot four threes a game, 39 yeah. percent, not bad. Um, 90 percent from the free throw line, which is damn good. But it's 10 games, so I want to see a longer, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, more developed. Like I said, I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't say he wasn't good. Yeah, yeah, still yeah a top I know. 15, 20 pick, but I'm just saying, mm-hmm. as far as the top 10, like. He missed the cusp for me just about a little bit. Yeah, I'm not like, agreeing or disagreeing with you. I'm but just saying, still, keep my eye on it. No, no, you should. I feel like this is the All of them this is the first year. Like even last year, we could have got fourth pick. We could have been like, oh man, like you know, we miss out RJ, John Brown, or whatever. This is the year we get top five. Yeah, we're good. Like mm-hmm. yeah. okay, we're getting yeah. somebody that we're gonna love. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm just, if we get the first pick, I honestly, I feel like they're going Wiseman. We get any pick behind that to about six, you go point guard. Mm-hmm. Toss up to yeah, anybody. So toss up to any one of the ones that we were just yeah. talking about. Yeah. And we won't be disappointed or mad. All right. Cool. That's a good, that's a good place to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. the only thing that worries me is if somehow we end up getting ninth pick or some crazy like uh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. No, don't, 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 don't talk. Don't, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, exactly. don't put that don't, even. Don't, 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 yeah. Who knows? I don't know. It's, it's one of those dark. It's one yeah. of those years. It's yeah. one of those years. Anybody can come out the pack and look nice. And I'm yeah. telling you, when it comes down to it, I have a strong feeling people are gonna be like, "How did Maxi? How did you know <laughs> no, Precious? Yeah, how did they drop all the way? Precious. Precious mm-hmm. dropped because his name. <laughs> <laughs> Precious, yo. I just say you gotta look back and be like, they drafted who over who? It's gonna be one of those years. Three point shot pressure. I just hope we're not talking about the <laughs> I can see newspapers going hand with the precious name. Well, I, yeah, oh my yeah, gosh. Go crazy with it. <laughs> Don't let them gain weight. Anyway. Oh, uh, <laughs> damn. Nah, nah. Bruh. Uh, my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. You know what? We, 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 we had a whole bunch of crazy loser games this week. Mm-hmm. I ain't talking about any of them. We're going to talk about the game we won. <laughs> yes. Knicks versus Miami. I take no notes today because I was taking notes for the show. I haven't even taken no notes for the game, but I'm going to try to go <laughs> off the brain of what happened. But stats and the facts, man, break down the game for us. Tell us who did what. You can start talking about it because I, I need a while to get to the stats. Okay, never mind then. So <laughs> <laughs> It was a really good defensive effort. Um, the ball was stagnant in the second and third quarter, but I think uh, we really did a good job in the first quarter of setting what we can do. So when the fourth quarter came, we were able to bounce back to that. Yes. Um, I think the free throws came in clutch. 
Yes. I also think that shot at the um, buzzer that didn't count for them was also clutch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which was... Uh, oh, too which, bad, yeah. so sad, point five. Yeah, which, <laughs> which really could have hurt us. And mm-hmm. um, I've often having no stats, that's... Pretty much what I, feel I just think the, I just like that the offense showed up today. Yeah, like offense really showed up today. Other than those, yeah. low, that was that we almost low have three moments. people at twenty. Yeah, yeah. one hundred and twenty-four yeah. points scored by yeah. the Knicks, That's and great. now it's time for the stats and the facts, man, to give you the, the, the statistics. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we um, saw long enough. Go ahead. Yeah, this, <laughs> well, these stats and facts are going to be a bit long because we had seven players in double figures. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so first, I'm going to start off with Julius Randle. I'm going to respect him today. Oh, res- Julius Randle, I'm going to call him by his name. Oh, okay. No, not no hand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just oh. Julius Randle. <laughs> Sir Julius. First, tell Sir Julius. Exactly. All right. 20, 26 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists. How many turnovers? Mm-hmm. Only two. Okay. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Two turnovers. Yeah. Trying to play my boy. No, I, 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 actually, actually, I was doing the opposite. Oh, okay, okay, I, okay. I knew, I knew it was two. All right, I cool. Yeah. I'll take that back. I'm sorry, I'm so aggressive. No, okay. <laughs> R.J. Barrett, twenty-three points, five rebounds, three assists. Yeah. Let's go, man. And and, and R.J.'s been slumping lately, and then yeah. he's got like a good game, and then mm-hmm. a bad game, and. Then, he needs Hopefully he's on the uptake right yeah. now, man. Hopefully. Well, he's on he's on that rookie wall. If you notice those down games, is either when they have a back to back or they have a really long flight. It's affecting him. He's not used to it. Oh yeah, jet when life, he, jet when, lag. When he gets used to it and he's more NBA acclimated, he'll become more consistent. Because when they give him the rest and then he comes in. Mm-hmm. He does what he did tonight. This is the RJ fan right here. <laughs> yeah. RJ, we have battles talking about RJ. Yo, I think he's great. I mean, I, no, I think I think he, I think he's doing good. I think he's good. I think yeah. the third pick, he was the best pick for, yeah. at that position that we were in. True that, true that. And then we had a Kevin Knox signing today. Knox. Yes. First, you gotta say the important <laughs> yeah. part of Knox, though. How many minutes did they give him? Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. How many minutes did they give that boy? There? They gave him twenty minutes. 17 points, 5 rebounds. Now, what if he had an extra 10 minutes? You don't think he could have scored 20 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got yeah, the minutes he should have gotten? Yeah. 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 Probably, yeah. yeah um, semi. Like, okay. <laughs> I'd say he, he like, could have scored 5 points yeah, in, in like, 10 more minutes. I feel like he can be, if, I'm, if I'm being picky, right? If I'm being picky, and I'm picky sometimes, he could have got like 25 strong minutes, you know? Because there was a point yeah. where, like you said, you mentioned earlier where he was hot and they took him out the game. Um, and I feel like that's the point where you could have like extended his minutes because he was on a roll. Mm-hmm. Now, halftime, I feel like <laughs> halftime came in. It was, a, it was a portion where Reggie Bullock was going off. Yeah. And I was thinking put Mox in, but he started going off. I was like, oh, no, never mind. Mox, yeah. you, can sit, you can stay down. Yeah. Yeah. Reggie Bullock, keep hitting threes. Mm-hmm. And that's the point where I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. cool but, but I wasn't even saying this game specifically. I was just saying in general. If oh. he gets the minutes, he's showing he's capable of putting up the numbers. Yeah, Give him the minutes. yeah, in general, he's had some rough stretches. I feel like he's having some confidence issues. Maybe it is because of lack of the minutes. And but, the lack of being steady in the rotation. Am I getting 30 minutes tonight? Yeah. Am I getting 10 minutes? That starts getting to you. But I, I know Nick, uh, we, this was a topic, but we didn't really talk about it, but it's fine. Mm-hmm. I know Knicks fans are getting tired of not having, you know, Kevin Knox play, but he's young. Let him alone. Let him yeah. let him, let him, grow. Maybe, he's yeah. not a bust. We're not going to trade him. For, oh, nah. nah yo, social media is crazy, though. Uh, <laughs> I can't deal with it. I want to respond, and I just bolt it. And like, I wasn't the biggest Kevin Knox fan Bringing them in, but I know to give them to give the man time. Yeah. And in the league right now, I'm putting a standpoint on it that he's the closest to being the next Durant mm. in the league right now. Ooh. He's the closest with oh. the body type. Power, <laughs> <laughs> he's the closest in potential to do it. The, who else is like that? There's no not uh, many. Um, I know somebody and he's in with the Pelicans right now and they killed us. Ingram. Ingram. Yeah. Ingram too. That boy. That boy grew a lot. Pause. (laughs) (laughs) Don't judge me. (laughs) But but Ingram is is a bit more established too. Word. True, true. I mean, in that position. That would be a great signing for us. Yeah, but they're going to get rid of Julius Randle. Not Julius Randle. um, And resign him. They're going to get rid of the other J. Drew Holiday. Mm -hmm. Oh, back to the stats. My bad. Then we got Reggie Bullock. 16 points, 4 assists. A strong 28. Strong 28? Yeah. Then we had Taj Gibson, 14 points, 8 rebounds. Taj's doing his thing, man. Yo. The boy from Brooklyn stepping up. He realized Morris isn't here. I think it's the second game in a row where he went. 
The first game he didn't he didn't miss, right? The the, the game we lost to Utah. Uh, Utah. The yeah, only yeah. reason we were in the game was because this guy was like eight for eight in the first half. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did his thing. He's doing his thing. He's yeah. a veteran. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he had a good ten minute stretch where he really put his imprint on that game in like the mid first yeah. beginning second. He really was doing his thing. And the defense on Jimmy Butler. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. former former teammate knowing his uh, New Orleans. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good point. You see him in practice. <laughs> yeah. Then we have Alfred paid in 10 points, 5 assists. All right, Alfred. How many minutes he had? <laughs> 31. <laughs> <laughs> 31 minutes from Alfred. Okay, now yes. today, it can't really, you know. Nah, they needed him. Frank needed had a groin him. issue. Nah, yeah. they needed him. Mm-hmm. I still don't know. Never mind. I just feel like... But your boy, Kadeem the Dream. Come on, Kadeem the Dream <laughs> Allen. Listen. Free good D, all right? <laughs> free good D. This guy can actually hit a three-point shot, and he's nice. underrated because he's only 26, and people see him as a tree chip. But after he... the stats, I got to ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. All right. He had 10 points, two rebounds, one assist. I mean, the assist wasn't that good, but free. <laughs> free. You only get to choose one. Free good D or free dot? It's still free oh, dot. It's still, it's, it's still <laughs> free dot. It's still free dot. It's still free dot. Let's get it. Free dot of him dot. <laughs> what you know this, window. man? You know, I know. I just want to. Who this? I just want to. Yo, that is the only one who follows us on Instagram. I'm not choosing nobody. <laughs> 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 Dean did take a picture with me though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. That's, and he's mad nice. If you ever yeah. meet him, he's like mad like. It's he, cool. Yeah. Hometown respect. Uh, How yeah. you guys do? We talk I like to the people? persona. Mm-hmm. He gives <laughs> he's nice. Yeah. Southern charm. Team stats. Right. <laughs> well, the Knicks allowed the Heat to shoot. 54% from the field and 40% from three. Mm. Nick shot 52%, 29% from three. And we won. Yeah. That's <laughs> free throws are similar. Both teams shot 23 or 28 from the line. I guess I know. I know. I already I feel like but knowing the, the team, I know the difference. Go ahead. But here's the difference, though. Points in the paint. Oh. Nick's had 72 points in the paint and Heat only had 46. Ooh. Oh, wow. Question. Question. And also, what was the turnover? What's the offensive rebounding Rick? I always feel like we always get these rebounds, and that's usually when we put teams away. All right, let me see. Okay, so turnovers. Yeah, the Heat had 15, the Knicks only had seven. Wow! Only seven turnovers. Wait, wait, wait. Is that like a, is that a season low? That could possibly be Technically a season high, no? Season (laughs) high, no? How does, yeah, turnovers is high. Seven turnovers? No, no, that's pretty damn good. As for rebounds, they were at a minimum this game because people were just knocking in their shots. Heat had 38 rebounds, Knicks had 39. Oh. Defensive rebounds, Knicks had 10. Heat had 8. Defensive rebounds, Heat had 30, Knicks had 29. All right. Okay. I think it really came down to turnovers and those last-minute free throws. Yeah. That yeah. yeah. Turnovers, definitely a big spot. Points in the paint was pretty crazy, though. That was a, that yeah. was a big difference. That was, yeah. that was a great stat you pulled out with that. Points, points in the paint, for matters. sure. Uh, the offense, like I said, the spacing just looks better with Randall... Or more, it's not both. Can't Having both. RJ in there with a little bit more room yeah. mm-hmm. um, was was helpful. The closing moments of the game, you don't have Morris giving you the ball. It was um, RJ had the ball in his hands and ended yeah. the game, mm-hmm. made the right decisions, gave it to Randall, who drove to a strong hand <laughs> left to, to mm-hmm. make some big baskets. That was yeah. huge for us. Yeah. Taz Gibson blocking Jimmy Butler at the end of the game was yeah. huge for us. Kevin Knox, who's usually giving you five points, all of a sudden, when he scored, what, like? 17. 17, 17 yeah. for the game, but in the first half, he had, what, like 14 points in 13 minutes, something crazy, yeah. similar to that. Like, he caught, people, he caught fire. <laughs> yeah, people stepped up when they wasn't usually stepping up, and that helped <laughs> us beat the third best team in the NBA today. And Shows well he could beat, to be honest. Hmm? And, our rivals. and our rivals. I will forever hate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heat hates you. Celtics. Pacers, Brooklyn, now you want to, you might be hiding all of them right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A matter of fact, though, like first. shout out Walt Clyde Frazier because there, I know he did it by accident, but during the um the game, he was talking about the Nets and he was like, when the because he was talking about when the Heat blew the game against the Nets mm-hmm. in the last five minutes, he was like, well, when they were playing in New Jersey, I was like, yeah, Clyde, let, let it be <laughs> let known. Let him know. Let it's it be known. <laughs> exactly. Let it be known. You're saying, you know, a gentrified team over here. <laughs> <laughs> They're forever Jersey to me. Forever yeah. Jersey. Whenever yeah. people try to talk trash to me about that, because it happens all the time. Brooklyn, that's it. And I'm like, listen, listen. You played in the IZOD Center. 
Let him yeah. go! <laughs> now you got the Barclays Center, which honestly wouldn't be all that if Jay Z wasn't so co signed on saying, it and everything. Yo, that was big. Brandon. We play in the garden. You lost. Boom. We yeah. go five and and seventy, whatever. You guys could go fifty and something and lose in the second round of the playoffs. You still don't play in the garden. And, and your physical arena is a hazard. I'm sorry. Don't get any <laughs> seats. Don't get any seats higher than the, the half court because it's dangerous and you fall. It's, 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 I'm telling you. If you know, if you sat there, you know what I'm talking about. Everybody shaking their head. Yes. Yeah. Because sat there is dangerous. Listen, you know it's da- you know it's dangerous when you get up to one of those nosebleeds and your ear starts popping. It's like what? what is this? <laughs> like oh, this is not right. And if Brooklyn fans see this, the other two people. That are in our group are Brooklyn fans, so yo. <laughs> we're the only ones that don't like Brooklyn. Yo, uh, yo, yeah. yo funny, I feel like you might have lost a sponsor because they, they were back in Brooklyn, but it's all fine. It's fine. They might come back. They'll come back around. That's, <laughs> <fine. laughs> That's, That's all right. So, anyway, now it's time for one of the favorite parts of the show. Yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's the Ooh Picks. If you don't know, your first time listening, the Ooh Picks are. The best plays of the week by the Knicks players. Not only Knicks players. There's some cool stuff that happens, but this is a Knicks mm-hmm. pod, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about the Knicks. So, anybody have any ooh picks? Do you want to go hmm. first, Ryan? I mean, I can go first. Okay, you set the tone. Yeah, I just want to know something. What's up? The Frank playing the New Orleans game. Does someone else have that ooh pick? Oh, I I, I was going to have that one. but I, you know, I, 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 I'll, I'll reserve that for you then. I'll just go with my one ooh pick then. Okay, all right. So my ooh pick comes from the Westchester Knicks. Oh, you took everybody. Okay. See against, <laughs> go, 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 go. against the Delaware Blue Coats in the G League. All right. So there's a player on the Delaware Blue Coats called Xavier Mumford. He had the ball at the wing. He decided to go left to the to the rim. Mm-hmm. Little did he know, there's this guy on the Knicks named Kenny Wooden who can jump out the damn gym. Yeah. <laughs> he went up for the layup. Kenny rose up. His arms were about like two feet over the rim. Mm. Literally grabbed the ball out of the air. Rejected. And came down with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny Wooten, Kenyon Martin did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was crazy. I've never yeah. seen nothing like that. That was cool. I haven't seen nothing like that since Kenya Martin did it from behind and grabbed it and was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> like, in the dude's face. Oh, I miss those NBA days. Yeah. yeah. Screaming in somebody's face, you trash. <laughs> <laughs> you trash, boy. Now, you, you, you look at somebody and they're like. Is it a rebound, <laughs> block, or steal? Exactly. What did I just get on you? I got everything on you. Trash. Exactly. Huh? Everything was good. Fair game. Too. Word. Everything was fair game. Tastes like honey nut cherry. Everything was fair uh, game. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, I don't think that. Up. At all uh, the things you could have said. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm we sorry. Love we love you, Lava. I'm sorry. We love you. <laughs> he, he, dropped, he dropped 26 out of 28. Yeah. I love Melo. Yeah, shout, shout out to Melo. Yes. <laughs> all right. In my next, I know he took everybody pick. I was, actually, I was gonna say my old pick this week is uh, anytime RJ drives to the basket and hits him with the euro. Oh, oh. his euro step is really becoming like his signature move, mm-hmm. and with his high arcing off the glass with the left hand, and now he's getting it with the right. Get, get that, it with the right. That euro is becoming one of the most dangerous moves by him. The only person I would say one hundred percent has a better euro than him. Well, a couple people, but. When it comes to mind right away, it would have to be onto Tacumbo and Harden. Tacumbo, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, his euro is like wow. Every time he does it, I'm like, that's that's a veteran move. All yeah. Right. Shout out to RJ, the euro, bringing the international game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, perfecting it almost. Perfecting it. Yeah, his Nyk. I love the way he finished by the rim today. By the way. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Usually he was struggling. He was struggling all year hitting these layups, <laughs> and he was getting a lot of and ones today. So yeah. shout out, shout out mm-hmm. to RJ again. I'm going to have to go with uh, Taj Gibson against uh, Utah. Okay, all right. That'll be my pick. All right. He did his thing. Oh, just that. Oh. Just, just that. He just just killed his it. whole... He just killed it. Yeah, right. he killed it. I feel you. Go <laughs> Veteran eight for presence. Eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, eight for eight. Yeah, Mine was Wooten, but... <laughs> <laughs> for somebody. <laughs> I mean, hey, you have my Frank picks. So I had to go with Wooten. All right, all right, all right. My man. All right, cool. Sorry. Well, give it away. It's fine. <laughs> My U pick was from the Pelicans game. It's the game where Miller pulled my guy mad early for no apparent reason. I ain't even hit that button. Okay. <laughs> 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 I 
the prince, the prince, the prince came in the game, scored 16 this game. But uh, in the all season, he was working on his handles. He had, he 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 got rid of uh, Chris this mm-hmm. year. He worked yeah. with somebody else on his handle this year. I think actually, you see the improvement. You see, I think yeah. Not, no 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 shade to Chris. I mean he's as good as what he does. But yeah. I think this was the guy for 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 Frank. Frank yeah, of course, yeah. everybody got their own dude. <laughs> right, all right. Um, so this play, um, you know, he was he was working the pick and roll pretty good. Uh, this game with Mitch, but this time Frank sees the pick. He kind of takes the ball. He leans left. Because if you, you guard, you know, when you lean, that's when you sell that crossover. Yeah. Uh, I forgot who was guarding him, though. It was um, Nikhil Alexander Walker, the rookie on yeah. the Pelicans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he, he schooled the rookie. The rookie fell for the lean. And as he was falling for the lean, Frank snatched the ball and crossed him. All of a sudden, Walker was still going the other way. Yeah. Outside of all that. And Frank kept going, goes to the hole. Jumps up in the air and bangs it for the open. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he did. Yeah, that was a good pick. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, other part. This is the also. This is the end of the show. But we all before you get to end the show. It's our other favorite part of the show. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> the bruh picks. Shaq and the fool got it from us. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lie. But <laughs> <laughs> bruh picks for the first person, for people who don't know, are the worst plays of the week. And you know what? It doesn't even have to be basketball. It doesn't have to be even be plays. It could be anything stupid that happened in general. Mm-hmm. It could be somebody said something stupid on social media. <laughs> it could be it could be tripped on the floor, hurt yourself. And I'll start it off. Oh, okay. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Andre Drummond. Oh, uh, ah. hit the button. Bruh. You kidding me? Like, Andre why Drummond. are we talking about this? That's a, that's a solid. I don't like it. Solid start. That was my pick. I had to start. Yeah. Andre Drummond <laughs> being in the trade rumors and the Knicks even contemplating bringing them here with nah, Mitchell Robinson. Man. Makes no sense. <laughs> Taking the minutes away from Mitch. He's only averaging 20 minutes a game. He's, so you want to... Bring him back down to 10? He's <laughs> <laughs> just not going to play. Uh, exactly. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It doesn't feel right for me. My bro pick would, uh, this might be a little harsh, whatever, but it's, it's got to go to the fact that people all want to talk about how David Stern passed and how great of a guy he was for the NBA and everything like that, which, don't get me wrong, great. Rest in peace to him and everything. Rest in peace, but David Stern. Why nobody want to bring up how you try to change the ball and it cost the NBA, like, Half a billion dollars. <laughs> and everybody was talking about, yo, it's slipping on my hands. We got to use seven different balls per game. It was orange and white. Like, uh, can we talk about that? Why nobody bringing that? That was terrible. That was one of the worst seasons in basketball. Everybody's like, he's so great. He was the best. And he was great, what he did, and mm-hmm. bringing us back to the Olympics, making the dream team. Don't get me wrong. God bless him. He was great. Mm-hmm. But let's not act like he didn't try to change the ball. Uh, uh- Bruh. Okay, well, <laughs> fifty yeah. years into the game, he wants to change the ball and chose composite, which is slippery. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes. Beca- no, nah, that's because he was dribbling the ball and they were shooting around like, "Oh yeah, we can do this," and forgot people sweat. <laughs> and the ball was getting wet, and I remember it was the most turnovers we've ever had in the league. Yeah, Pit players were complaining. They wanted to fire him. Then he had to switch it back, and it cost almost half a billion dollars. Well. Okay, first. Bruh. <laughs> Can we just talk about it? for that, but you know, yeah. he did some other good things. You no, know? no, he did great. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm the type of person, you gotta give, you gotta give somebody the flowers he deserves, uh-huh. but you also gotta give him the shit. Let's not yeah. act yeah. like he was Mr. He Perfect because he, he, he passed. He, he had more hits than misses. I'll yeah, he yeah. did. Yeah. But, yeah. His than but I just got me annoyed because ESPN was like, he, he did nothing wrong in the league. He was a proprietor for for player, um, you know, actions. And, for, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, but let's not act like he didn't try to change the ball. And he, he yeah. read the draft for Patrick Ewing. Oh. <laughs> And, 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 that's, that's, the, that's the most important thing he did. You know what? Give me, give me the bro pick because I forgot about that. I'm sorry. Uh, Dennis Stern didn't change the ball. He did everything perfect. I'm sorry. <laughs> he gave no, one, the bro one, pick. One, <laughs> one, <laughs> I forgot. One more thing, though. <laughs> since he had to bring up David Stern, the one thing about David Stern I did not like was the fact that he tried to change the dress code all because of AI. 
and the way he yeah, was dressing. Bro. That's another thing. Forgot about Let's that. not act but, like he was anti-hip-hop yeah. and everything else and made it go from AI, which was cool and trans- trendsetting, to what Westbrook and them are doing, which is terrible. Exactly. <laughs> you know what, though? I, I, I'm going to give him a pass on Ewing, that. So I pass. I'm going to give him a pass on that, and, and I'll tell you why. Only because I recently heard a story about, I forgot who said it. I, I think it was Jalen Rose who said that he only reason he did that was because the sponsors were acting up. Mm-hmm. So he had to have, like, to do this rule where he's like, oh, yeah, be, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. be buttoned up. But then he was also saying, like, on the slick, he would be like a wink, wink. Yeah, he, yeah, wear the sneakers. But he was, like, saying it on the slick and kind of, like, yeah. ease his way back oh, into mm-hmm. it. And, 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 to be, <laughs> and to be fair, and to be a little fair to him, Gilbert Arenas did kind of solidify, like... Two guns. Yeah. <laughs> Two guns. <laughs> Two guns. <laughs> and then, then they asked him, how did you get the guns in? Oh, wait, Yo, wait, we're wearing baggy jeans. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Tight pants, button downs. Wait, hold up. I thought Raymond Felton had the two guns. No, Raymond Felton was the two yeah, guns. Yeah, Raymond Felton was two guns. Oh, Raymond Felton was two guns. I think Gilbert Arenas was like six. He definitely had guns, though. Yeah. Six guns. Yeah, six guns. Yeah, guns. Yeah, six 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 guns. Yeah, six
All right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> former Nick Great Travis Ware. It doesn't For, matter. So former Nick Great Eddie Curry? Eddie Curry. Former Nick Great oh, Eddie Curry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't uh, matter. Nah. If you were Nick, I you draw the line. not there no more. Nah, nah, F that. Exactly. Former <laughs> Nick Great Jerome James. Yeah. Former <laughs> Nick <laughs> Great Antonio McDyce. Exactly. McDyce, McDyce. Bill Walker. McDyce, I'll let you get away with. Ronaldo Walkman. Yes. Former Nick Great Jason Jordan Hill. We can go there's you three don't. players you cannot perform a great on. One is Eddie Curry. Yes, you can. The second is Sheldon Williams. Oh, uh, Sheldon oh, Williams? Oh, no. Man. No, I don't care if you had a baby with Candace Parker. He's not great. And the third person you are not going to put up here is, um, what's his name, that played all those games with the cast, one of the worst centers we ever had. Four minute great Andrea Bonyani. Oh, Andrea! Oh, 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 I'll draw the line. Drag! <laughs> Drag it in the snow. Hell, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> nah. Uh, oh, I don't know about what was his name? The center. He was terrible. We, like we watched the one game. Remember, we were crying, laughing oh, for twenty. Jack Jeffries. Oh, Jack Jeffries. Oh, wait. <laughs> nah. I once watched my man nah. miss four layups in a row. Oh, Jared man. Jeffries was before his time. Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> He's oh, so garbage, man. he'd have been whacking the 30s. Yo, they gave Melo Jared Jeffries like, yo, you not winning the chip, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. One more. Four minute great Chris Duhon. One more. I'm he not mad had, at Duhon. He actually had an assist record. I think he might still have it. I'm, I'm not mad, I'm not like mad at Duhon right? because of what he did in Duke. and He has a legacy about him. Okay. I don't know about Cantor, you trying to be funny. He's actually great. All right. So, Enos Cantor against the Raptors. I don't know if y'all saw this play. But time was running off the time was running off the clock. Mm-hmm. Cantor was in the backcourt, so he had to heave it up. Mm. My dude, wind it up, heave the ball. Oh no! It went wide left into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, oh, no. that's like when what's his name heaved it up. Uh, he was point guard for us not not too long ago. Jared Jack. Oh, oh my yeah. God, Jerry yeah. Jack was the key oh, of these lobs that wasn't going any yeah. lob into the stands. You were not Lob City. You like, not, he did oh, not man. go to the It's Clippers. like the meme from uh, Don't Drag Me If I'm Wrong. I think it's of Terrence Ross where he throws the ball into the stand. Oh, and he's standing the there the and he hits the lady oh, in the face. Yeah. And then he turns and walks away like, <laughs> like tiptoeing away like, oh, my bad. Like, yeah, and, and, and just to specify, when I say wide left, I don't mean like you know, the basket is here and then the ball went there. I mean, the ball went there. Why? Oh, right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> and went adjacent. Yes. Bring back to Matt. Second ooh pick. KD and Perkins beef on Twitter. Right, the bro pick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot about I this. Forgot I about forgot about that. that. Yeah. That was a gimme. Go ahead. There was, there was legit burns on both sides. Mm. Because first, I think... Perk was like, you know, I'm gonna go on Sports Center and you know and and explain why Westbrook is Mr. Thunder or whatnot. Say he's the best player in Thunder history. Then I think some dude that um works with Celtics media came to Perk and he was like, come on, you know he's not the best player in Thunder history. He's basically saying KD is. Mm. And then Perk was like, how he pointed out how when Westbrook was <laughs> out with the injury that KD couldn't get them past the second round. So what that says about KD. Mm. So then KD felt some type of way about that. <laughs> this is so stupid. And KD fired back and he was like, you average a whole two points and three rebounds in the playoffs, but you played hard though, champ. Bruh. Uh, Play <laughs> you. <laughs> Trying to take credit for going to the second round. Like, though you average two points and three. Okay. Exactly. But, yeah. and, he was and there then, though. But I like what he yeah. came back with. Yeah, then Perk yeah. fired back and he was like, you did the weakest move in NBA history Fact. of, of 3-1 against the Warriors and went to join them the next year. Fact. Oh. That's a big, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I can have a two-hour podcast show about KD doing that. Like, I have so much to say about that. Oh, I'm yeah. not even going to yeah. get to it. We had our conversations about then, KD here. But, yeah. <laughs> but then KD fired back and he was like, well, <laughs> if you worked on your game... <laughs> <laughs> You could have been more help to us. Damn. So he's basically saying that if you stayed in the gym, you would have been more of a help to us. Bruh. Ah, man. Stop. But you missed one of Kendrick, one, one of, uh, Kendrick Perkins thing you said. You're right about the champ part. Yeah. So how are you going to tell me yeah. I should have worked harder to help y'all out when I have a ring before you did? <laughs> I had a ring with the Celtics, and I helped them out just as well. Yep. Ooh. So why oh, why couldn't you do that? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what segment this is. <laughs> <laughs> I have mixed feelings about yes. this. 
<laughs> but it's true though. He's a, he was a champion with the Celtics before him. Yep. Mm. So I'm trying to help you, bro. You didn't step into your game. Exactly. Yeah. You left. Next bro pick goes to my guy, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Against the Sixers, on the fast break, he had a wide-open dunk. Mm. Rose up with two hands for safety. Oh, no. Hit it off the back, hit it off the, back of the rim. S still wasn't safe? Still was not safe. <laughs> Damn. Bruh. Fellow Scorpio Brendan missing the yeah. whole thing. No. No. <laughs> exactly. And my last bro pick goes to Austin Rivers for the Rockets against the OKC Thunder. I don't know if y'all saw this play, but he took his defender off the dribble. The big man sets a pick. Rivers was, able, Rivers was able to get away. He drove it to the lane. He, the big man was back, was back. So Rivers, was, you know, he did the right thing. He was like, you know, I'm gonna go for the floater mm -hmm. from three feet out. Yeah, he floated it. Uh oh. And it didn't even touch the rim. It went right, oh, back, it went, it came right back down. Ball yeah, yeah. And then it touched the net. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was very <laughs> Jeffrey. <Jeffrey's there. laughs> And you know what you yeah. forgot about Westbrook too? After he missed that dunk, he came down the very next play and missed the layup. Oh, damn, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Damn! damn. Bruzz on Bruzz on Bruzz. Oh, man. Bruzz. That's crazy. He missed the layup. I mean, he was guarded on the layup, mm -hmm. but oh, okay. he should have hit that. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. And then he was like, you saw how mad he was. Like, Come on! <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, is he, is, is he in trade rumors? No. Nah. Uh, I'm thinking it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Houston's good, man. All right. Yeah. All right. Those were our bro picks. That's our show, guys, man. Thanks for coming true. No problem, man. Thanks Thank for you having us, always, man. I appreciate y'all yeah. for sure, man. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah, all the freaks in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having us. Appreciate it, man. Facts, facts. If you didn't know, damn, you've been here so much, I probably should have pointed out that you guys are also, like, designers and you make your own merch. Yeah. Yeah. I kinda, I'm pretty sure they know, though. Nah, but, <laughs> but for those who, who don't know us and haven't seen us on, on the show before, um, we're um, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at NY Freak Apparel. Mm -hmm. And um, you could go to our store at um, www.nyfreakapparel.store. Mm -hmm. And you could cop any of the merch, any of the sweaters you see me wearing, uh, a couple hats they're wearing. We have a bunch of stuff. Come check it out. It's dope stuff. It's yeah. it's real New York. It's not just for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. It's for all New York sports and yep and landmarks and everything. Check us out. Yeah, check them out, man. They really they go hard. They go hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they they work hard is what I mean. And they, <laughs> <laughs> and they got good stuff, man. Um, so yeah, definitely check those guys out. I'll give them a follow. Thank you, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, yeah, follow us too, man. The Nick of Time Show. Shout out to Dash Radio for having mm -hmm. us on it on. And so yeah, shout out to you guys. But also. If you're not on our YouTube channel yet, are you stupid? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> For Call real, yourself though. a fan? <laughs> Join our YouTube, man. <laughs> YouTube.com slash The Nick of Time Show. Don't forget the the. It's very important. The the mm -hmm. is important. Definitely. And also, we are on, on all podcast forms. That is Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeart. All them. Just Google, just Google. Google us, baby. We here. Everything we you here. got. Everything yeah. you the got. Nick and Time podcast. <laughs> Shaq, the Nick Time Show. Nick and Time Show. Nick and Time Show. That's how you know that's we OG. Yeah, that's yeah. how you know we OG. Yeah, because you know, we know, know the original. We know the yeah. original branding. The original branding with Spike Lee shouted us out. was like, yeah, this is the Nick and Time podcast. Yeah. And us, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My bad, man. That's right. I didn't even say it out loud. Anyway. Scrap that part. Anyway, if you love us, yeah, definitely head to the iTunes and give us a like and leave a comment as well. Let's sure. us out and get this money. You know? Yes. Because <laughs> you know, sure, everything's coming out of pocket right now. You, you, want, want, right? you want more Yo, content, better content? <laughs> yeah. You want more content, better content? Support. Facts, 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 yes. facts, facts, facts. Yeah. Also follow us on all social media too with the Nick of Time show on Twitter and the Nick of Time show on Instagram. It was the, the KOT show on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. All right. Where can they find you, my guy? They can find me on IG at Sir G is Chillin'. Sir G is Chillin'. That is S-I-R-G is C-H-I-L-L-I-N. Right, and they can also find me at JLS Draw Things because I, I draw things and I actually do some motion graphics. Do. And his drawings are dope, too. Yeah, they're dope. Oh, yeah. thanks, Gotta check thanks, them out. Thanks, guys. 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 That is our show, guys. Dope show. Thank you for having us once again. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, Always love. Yes, show you'll be back. We are out of there now. Peace. Peace and love out to where you from. But all of the world they have to come. Say a bit. Bright lights, big city. Bright lights, big city. I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do. Represent for my New York City crew. Say again. Bright lights, big city. Bright lights, big city. New York, New York, big city, your dreams. I'm <laughs> gonna.